If you enjoy this episode, be sure to check out our Oppenheimer podcast sometime this week on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Bowtie Movie Lounge. I'm your host, Jacob Strupeck. Joining me today from my right, stage left, no, that's stage right, my dear sister, Rebecca Strupeck. We have Virginia Phillips, and then we have Cousin Dallas. Thank you all for joining me today. How do you all feel? feel oh, good? Thanks, good. thanks for thanks. having me, bro. Oh, this, is, this is surreal. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's quite an ensemble. I mean, we're all decked out for possibly one of the, I don't know, look, the sequin blazer. I wish I had something as fancy as that. Well, you even had, did the nails? And the sequin nails. You, you, didn't, even, you didn't even tell me. I love, <laughs> yeah. That was a, that was a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> that was very, and then like the pom-pom earrings. Rebecca, you pulled up today in a beautiful Japanese blossom <laughs> dress. <laughs> And Dallas in the the silk. satin. Silk. Well, that's silk. Yes, like some of the Sat- It's satin silk. Satin silk. A man of taste and class. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Bringing out the Kennergy, because today we are talking about Barbie, one of the biggest phenomenons of this summer. Half of it with Barbenheimer. So we'll we'll get into that shortly. So, but first, I want to welcome everyone. The Bowtie Movie Lounge. Sit back. All right, Barbie. What first impressions? First impressions. What? So, what was like y'all's overall take from Barbie? Rebecca, we'll start with you. I thought it was good. I had really high expectations, and like. I grew up playing with Barbies, so I was so excited to see it. And they, like, they um, they had, like, put it all over social media, and so they, like, it was just, like, really well prepared. And, like, you know, we had bought our tickets in advance, so I was excited yeah. to see it. I thought it was good. That was good. Virginia? Okay, so I, if I, I think if I went to the theater with no expectations, I would have been like, that's fine. But I expected alchemy and magic, and I was disappointed. So I would say I would say it was good. There was there's a lot of good, good components about it, but to me they didn't weave together to become a lightning strike, which mm. is what I expected Greta and Marco to deliver. Oh, wow. but all the same, I've been so <laughs> invested in this. I feel like I'm a little bit Barbie oversaturated, so I'm actually <laughs> planning on trying to like revisit it at the end of the summer when I've like cooled off my like analytical side of it all a bit and see if I have a different impression. But I did go to see it twice since it came out. Yeah, and uh. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I know you like really surprised me yesterday when we were talking and like when we texted and you were like, yeah, I saw it both Thursday and Friday. And mind you, we're recording like the Sunday after it came out. I could I could use more time. <laughs> like, just more stay time. busy getting ready. <laughs> I know, she's <laughs> already, all, Virginia has already seen it twice. I've only seen it once. Dallas, what was your final? So, I mean, I'm about? not I'm not huge on Barbie, you know. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not a, <laughs> I'm not a Barbie playing guy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But I have to say, like, I was blown away. I, I thought it was amazing. You know, I was I went there with my fiance just, you know, kind of thinking she, you know, dragged me along to one of her girl <laughs> movies, you know. But I I probably liked it more than her, honestly. <laughs> really? <laughs> it, it was great. It was great. Ryan Gosling, Margot Robbie, they're awesome. They were perfect parts. So. Yeah, that's definitely, that's going to be a big point, a big question later. But. I feel the same way. I mean, I've kind of went almost with like this feeling of almost being dragged along by my girlfriend. But at the same time, and I will get to this too in a second. When I first saw the trailer, I was like, okay, Greta Gerwig and Barbie, Margot Robbie, this is not going to be just about the doll. This is going to be something different, They're, especially when that first trailer that was replicating 2001 Space Odyssey with like the her standing as the massive monolith and and the little girl smashing the the doll heads like I thought that was awesome I was like this is gonna be something different and but anyway so overall I felt like it was very fun like I had it was almost like a roller coaster I was able to kind of especially after just watching Barben, uh, not Barbenheimer, Oppenheimer, <laughs> like it's, it's, it's on the brain. So after just watching Oppenheimer and like having this dialogue like that, I wasn't able to come up for breath. This was a nice kind of reboot. So I think if you're going to do like the, the, the double screening, 
Oppenheimer and then Barbie because Barbie offers this kind of like breath of fresh air almost, kind of cleanses, cleanses your palate. But at the same time, it's like this explosion of color and creativity, I feel like. Mm. So needless to say, overall, I thought it was a lot of fun. And I, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Um, so released July 21st, 2023. Um, we're talking about Greta Gerwig's comedy film, Barbie. With a hundred and forty-five million dollar budget, and so far making one, what I saw was one hundred and forty-five million up to date. So that's what um, I heard too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's also just domestically, and I'm pretty sure that it was like somewhere around the three hundred million dollar range worldwide, which is pretty insane. Yeah. Um, stacked cast of Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, America Ferrera. Kate McKinnon, Issa Rae, Ray, Ray, uh, Ray Perlman, Will Ferrell, Simi Liu, and Michael Sarah. Honestly, a very stacked cast. That's kind of the charm that Oppenheimer had, the other half of this phenomenon. And I just, I don't know, like, that's just, like, part of, like, the power that drive, drove this film was its cast. What do you all think? Like, Well, I, I mean... Most all successful films, I mean, that's your cast is obviously everything, you know, like when you're, you know, making a film like your cast, like that's going to be your almost your bread and butter. That's your bread and butter right there. You know, Uh, you know, obviously you have your storyline and your climaxes and your no antagonist, all that stuff. But your cast, who's going to play those parts? That's, I mean, huge. Right. No, they're the ones. And this and Barbie like definitely had a huge cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for for real, Rebecca. Yeah, I Virginia? enjoyed seeing. Um, like I remember seeing like, or not. I enjoyed seeing Margot Robbie as a less serious character in her other movies that I've seen. She's always been so serious, like mm-hmm. battle scenes and all that. So with her being like more, I would say more gentle, but like still, it was a serious movie in a way. Yeah. So I thought that her character as less serious, but still like somewhat down to earth like it was it was pretty cool seeing her do that and with all the other characters like i don't think i would recast unless i recasted a minor character for someone like a more famous actor or actress. yeah agreed virginia okay i thought ryan wins <laughs> i think okay. everyone thinks that <laughs> i'm not so i was just looking up when the notebook came out it came out in 2004 so i was in high school so ryan gosling's kind of like I know a little bit of a heartthrob, I think, for people from that, that are my age. I'm, I'm Margot's age. I'm 32. Um, I'm not a super huge fan, but I, I actually am really proud of noticing this. Yeah. Um, I think that Ryan's acting secret is that his nostrils look permanently flared. Oh, like, they're just like point. this all the time. And it's like he's always on the, like, inhale of an emotion. And it keeps just pulling you into what he can just be standing there, like, in the notebook in a doorway. And you're like... I'm feeling something. I don't know what, but I'm with you. I don't know. I'm like, what's going yeah. on? Um, so I finally put my finger on that. And, uh, but yeah, I really thought, I really thought he won. I think he got to do, um, I mean, we've seen the funny clip of him dancing as a kid and I think yeah. he was on Mickey Mouse club, but yeah, he, he really served. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So that is like one of these like opening questions. First, I will give a spoiler alert to anybody. We will, be talking about this film in depth, in detail, and like, so if you haven't seen it, I want to watch it first. Spoiler for anyone. Um, but that is one of my opening questions tied in with what you were saying. Did did Margot or Ryan win this film? Like, I hate talking about both of like the most influential actors of our of this time right now too, especially like with every like the way they've like especially Margot Robbie blowing up since Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, who who won the film? Ryan. Ryan. Not not uh like his acting I think was superior to Margot's actually. I'm a huge Margot fan. I've been a Margot fan. That's like what like what one reason I've been like drooling over the film. I mean, I have been <laughs> since it, the trailer came out in December 2022, the Space Odyssey yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But um I I saw her in About Time, which was one was before Wolf of Wall Street, and I was yeah. like, oh my goodness, she's an actual Barbie. <laughs> I'm such a big fan. I I she there's a clip of her talking to um, Brad Pitt where she's like, I'm not a Barbie from a couple years ago, but uh, oh, she wow. was she was she looks the part. She was meant to play this, yes. I think. Um, at the same time, I actually kept felt I felt like I kept looking at her and seeing Harley Quinn, 
like in how she acted. So I was like, I felt like Mm. there was a few copy and paste things. And both of them are storybook characters, but I also felt like her rate of speech and some other things, maybe this is just just part of an actor being an actor, but didn't really change. Um, So yeah, for me, Ryan won. Ryan won. You you felt like Margot brought a lot of herself into, or like other characters into this, into this. I'm not sure. Maybe I just... Maybe it just wasn't as extreme enough of a role. And I actually have a few, like, yeah. I wish there would have been a few more, like, dollisms that she'd kept yeah. throughout. Yeah. When yeah. she has I the meltdown, she, like, turns into, like, a stick. And, like, yeah, so I think she's like a stiff. doll again. I was like, wait, I almost forgot you were a doll. Cause, <laughs> so I wish there had been a little more of that because it was so endearing. And, mm-hmm. and she is yeah. playing a doll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I this is going to come up later. I, I saved it for later. But I'm feeling critical, so I'm going to release it now. When she runs into Ray Perlman... Yeah. This character during the thing, and she says, who are you? I just feel like that line was delivered wrong. I was like, it could have been comedic. Like, we, you just said what we were all thinking. Like, what just happened? Where are we? Yeah. Who are you? Just be like, who are you? Yeah. Like, I was like, that's mix a, it up. Don't just, point. like, read the script. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, a good Ryan point. wins. So, I, st- I still care about Margot. <laughs> I know. I, I, I just, I feel like Ryan's a little underrated as an actor. Mm. My take is Ryan did kind of upstage Margot in a way. So, Rebecca, Dallas, what do y'all think? I think Ryan, I mean, he had a lot more humorous, like, you know, Mar- Margot was, she was she had funny moments, uh, but Ryan had, like, I found more humor in some of his lines and some of his parts, mm-hmm. just, like, what he had to portray, like, especially, like, in the, like, the scene where he's, like, supposed to be, like, really upset. Like, he's upset, but, mm-hmm. like, it's also hilarious that he's like the way that he acts upset and like how he, yeah. his skills of like of being you when, know such a great he gets actor out on the dance floor <laughs> no 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 like so when they're um when she's when she's like, like consoling him yeah and he like you know oh, just hilarious. runs up to his bed and he just That's like really plants funny. his face <laughs> in his bed and he's just that like dude, it's just hilarious you know like like he's like a little kid but like yeah that's exactly what i was gonna but say. i mean he's a doll but like it, it was just but he didn't like overdo it in a weird like theatrical yeah. way was, but yeah. he didn't like not be a doll having an emotional yeah. crisis yeah. <laughs> like it was just really funny how he did it and i just i, I think yeah. he won too like i'm, I'm gonna have to say okay he won so that. so us three are on ryan rebecca i want to say ryan but i feel like we didn't see a whole lot of his character like i feel like the whole time he was kind of like just like everyone just kind of treated him like he was just this like a brainless guy and he was mm. only there for his handsomeness so i want to i want to say that i wish we had more of him and like more but i loved his character how he like always stuck by our side because like that's how like i feel like i would be placed in a movie or if like if i was a character or anything i'd be the friend who like oh well, let me come with you oh let me do that so i feel mm. like i relate to ryan more than robbie mm. like just his character in general so i don't think i can say that ryan took it over Gotcha. So you didn't you're, see enough of him. You so know? you're gonna, you're gonna play it safe, kind of ride the line yeah. here. You don't want Margot Robbie coming after you or anything. Like that. <laughs> sure, let's say. Okay, that. we'll we'll take it there. But just to clarify, I feel that like Margot was born to play this role. Yes. Oh I've yeah, heard, for, like, sure. Um, for sure. Yeah. Like, no, just... Who's the girl from? Like I can't remember names sometimes. From uh, Les Mis, she plays. Oh, Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. I think she was talked about being mm-hmm. cast. I was like, nope. She was. It was mm-hmm. always supposed to be Margot. Yeah. Anne Hathaway and Amy Schumer. Yes. And really? Hathaway, yeah, that was that was the that was nothing against Amy Schumer in that matter. I just I don't see her as Barbie. Yeah, I don't see it. As I don't see her as I th- Barbie. I mean, when I try to think of another Barbie, I, I can't. I can't. I yeah. can't think I of anybody other than yeah. Margot. But you know, probably because I you know went to the movie and saw Margot yeah. Robbie playing Barbie. Right now, I can't. I who who else who else <laughs> yeah. can play Barbie? Yeah, you know? if you were to ask me, like five years ago, to cast a a Barbie movie, I most likely would have picked Margot Robbie because she's just, you know, her acting skills are on point and she has the looks and I, I just think she was born for this role. Yeah. But I, I think, uh, has, oh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, another little, like, so I think it was like a, like a, towards the end of the movie or uh, kind of in the middle when, uh, you know, Barbie was like feeling like she was nothing and didn't know what she she's not a Barbie anymore, like, doesn't know what she's good for or anything. 
or and says she's like ugly and depressed. But yeah. then there was like a little director's side yeah. note or whatever. The yeah, note to Paul, the, yeah, the, note, yeah. Girl Robbie is not the right person. Yeah, to not the right yes. person to say yeah. that she looks ugly and depressed. Yeah. But you know, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, though, even though she was, didn't have any makeup on and she was literally sobbing, she was still literally so pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That, that's was, one thing that I saw. I was like, yeah, that that was spot on. I was thinking <laughs> yeah. the exact same thing when that narration came uh-huh. on. Yeah. It was awesome. I would have liked a little more Helen Mirren because it started yeah. out with like, it, I felt like I was getting drawn into a story and I was just like, mm, I'm so excited, <laughs> like movie magic. Um, but then she just like disappeared and then she appears back for that and I was like, oh, hello. Like, <laughs> oh, we're, we're, it's just too a little disjointed, um, I thought. Also, I can't remember if I said this. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, I'm pregnant right now, so <laughs> like a little... It takes a little longer for things to it load can, It could be the scapegoat. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. Shh. Yeah. Hey, just let me have it. Um, but she no. can really act. Like, I, Tanya, like I said, I've been a fan of her for a while. I, Tanya was uh, extraordinary. I, I like figure skating. Um, her, her acting in that, I think she was meant to do that role as well. It was amazing. Um, and I'm really happy for her. She, I think she wants to move out of acting and into producing yeah. and kind of drop the acting. And I think that's happening for her. And I'm really happy for her being able to craft her career Big in time. the way that she's wanted to. No, I agree. Yeah, I did. That's one thing I noticed is like produced by Margot Robbie. I was like, oh, wow, yeah. look, look at her. Like, you know, usually you do have that like where the act, the main actor is wanting to like spread their wings and produce more and be more involved behind it. But no, I, that 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 is a good point that she is an amazing actress, even though we've all picked Ryan <laughs> over. <laughs> um, were you were you both Barbie girls? Growing up, so we've already mentioned this, but this is my this is like an opening question. So I guess I can turn it straight to Dallas. How, <laughs> I think you should do that. <laughs> so how how, how He's was Barbie? The silk. He is. But how was the Barbie involved sequence. in your life? Okay, so I may have destroyed a few Barbies in my childhood. <laughs> maybe you know. Okay. Yeah. Put them to the flame, or oh. you know, maybe maybe smashed them. You know, like in the opening scene. So you did make a bunch of weird ugly Barbies. Bar- weird Barbies. I guess yeah. I made a bunch yeah. of weird Barbies, but I mean, I, unless they can they can still be alive in pieces. I mean, this is reminding me of that kid but, from Toy Story. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I might have you know strapped them to a rocket or something, and you know <laughs> shot so them crazy. off, or you know maybe. Put a stick of little those little firework dynamites and you know oh <laughs> I've destroyed a few Barbies it's in like my day. Pe- peace is not an option with Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'll say the same. And you know, so side note, shout out to your sister, our cousin Savannah. Yes. Her, the way I was like, especially first introduced to Barbie was going to your house as a little kid. Mm-hmm. And seeing her have like the collection oh, of yeah. Barbies, she was yeah. she was big on Barbie. She had big. one of those like shoe racks like mm-hmm. on her closet door full of all these Barbies, and I would like I would go in and be like enamored, like wow, that's a bunch of Barbies. She has like two Kens too, like you know, just hearing like. <laughs> I'm the, pretty sure she had three Ariels. Yeah, legends Aww. say like it was you know girls. Most girls did not have the Kens, right? Am I right on this? I don't remember Ken at all. Real? Oh, wow. I, I, remember, I remember. I knew he was out there, but he wasn't. I'm pretty sure my sister had a couple kins. Yeah. Definitely had a couple. I'm sure that I'm pretty. And I also remember she had, so she had Ariel, and she also had. Uh, the Ariel that the tail moved. That, and then she had the prince. The Ariel with, with the, it, the, yeah. Uh, the, and she had the prince. princess Ariel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there were a bunch of crossovers. I do remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Now. Mm-hmm. But that was the connection that I had to Barbie. Um, I mean, especially since, like, I've, you know, been dating my girlfriend, she, we haven't, like, done anything like that, played with her Barbies or anything like that, but there have been times where she's like, we need to watch a Barbie movie, which we haven't yet, sadly, and even in preparation for this, we fell off that bandwagon, um, but that's pretty much the connection I have to this. So, um, do you, so do you all recall, so we've already talked a little bit about this, but, like, what... What was your first reaction to seeing the trailer, the first trailer to Barbie? We've already touched a little bit on it. So, Rebecca, did you ever watch the trailer? Yes, I did. Okay. What what what, what, what was your thoughts? What I your loved. Thoughts? So, I think the first one I saw was like the like the first scene I remember, and it kind of just kind of stuck. Which it's like in the official trailer, it's like um, they're in the car. And she's like, Ken, what are you doing? And you know all that. And then she says something about 
did you bring your roller skates? And he like lifts them up. He's like, I never go anywhere without them. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Like that's because like they always like you can have these like little travel kits like with your Barbie and you can just have everything. Oh, and so, I so I just thought that was so fun because mm-hmm. like that's a good point. you can't bring a Barbie without accessories. And he like Ken had his accessories and mm. it was just so funny. I love it. But, Vir- yeah. So I was excited. Virginia, what, what were your first impressions on seeing the Barbie trailer when it dropped? Okay, so the the December one, because there was like, I think there was four total. Yeah. Four trailers. I don't remember the final one, but so there was the December 2022 one with the Space Odyssey reference. Yeah. I mean, I saw that and I was like, that's Barbie. That, that's Barbie. <laughs> like, this is this is how it's meant to be. Margot Robbie's Barbie. Off. Um, I, there wasn't a lot of other content in it. It was just Margot Robbie standing yeah. there as the monolith. Um, when the later ones came out, though, I got more and more excited. I mean, just like I was thinking of that, did you bring your rollerblades? Mm-hmm. Like, that was just such a doll and storybook appropriate response yeah. to, like, <laughs> couple conflicts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a good point. And, and I just was like, they're just nailing it. And then um, yeah. there's the scene from the party when um, Ken is asking if he can stay over, and um, she says, to do what? And it, it was also just, like, so comedic and story-like and dollish. Um and also, uh, there's so much pink. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I, I actually try to, like, I love pink as an accessory, but not wear too much of it. Because it does, you got to be really confident. I mean, no, confident men wear pink. <laughs> men are confident in their manhood. But there's a, there's a saturation point that you don't want to, like, if you want to be taken seriously, you don't want to be too pink and girly unless mm-hmm. you're super confident about it. So just getting to, like, embrace all these shades of pink um, that were all over the set and the, a lot of other details about the set, it... I got I got really excited every time it came out. Every time a trailer came out. Every time you saw pink, you're like, Barbie, Barbie, Barbie. yeah, just yeah. To, just all the details. Yeah, the trailers got me really excited. Yeah, because you you exclaimed earlier like just how excited you were, or and how like so yeah. You so were. the trailers coming out, and I'm I'm not a big movie goer. Like, um, I'm, I'm married. My husband loves to watch like TV at night or keep up with movies. I I would usually rather just like. I call it like piddling, just run around and do something else. <laughs> like I'm not, I'll sit down and watch a show, but it's not my default to like chill out. Um, and I don't love actually going to the theater. And I d- I've never in my whole life been so excited for a movie to come out. And I told my, my husband, because he gets really excited about stuff and he goes to the theater by himself. Like he was excited about Dune. But I told him, I was like, if this is what everyone feels like when I can they're excited about a movie. This is amazing. Like yeah. I'm electrified. Like I cannot <laughs> wait. Like I ordered this like long before I, I knew you were going to ask about the oh, podcast. Really? So you bought that pink for, sequin blazer. So you bought that for Barbie pretty much. Yeah. I'm actually renting it wow. um, from newly, not a sponsor, <laughs> but I rented it for the release. Um, and yeah, I think like weeks and weeks and weeks ago, I was talking to girlfriends about like getting together to go see it. Cause it seemed like a good, like girl time. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so I love it. I, I've been I've been hyped, and and then I got really hyped too, not just from the trailers, but from watching the interviews with Greta and Margot especially. Um, I mean, Greta said there's an interview I think it's with ABC Australia where Margot talks about how Greta's Greta's directing and writing style, mm-hmm. and says that she's able to serve heart and humor. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's my number. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I've never <laughs> felt like I was going to see a movie made for me. And I think they talk about like the lack of CGI and the like the real yeah. sets. And mm-hmm. sometimes I'm I get analytical while I'm watching a show like the end of the Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm supposed to be impressed. I'm just staring at a screen of CGI. <laughs> I feel nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so just the fact that it was going to be real creative yeah. and just you, I just feel like that energy comes across. There's some things you can only do with CGI, but when it's a real object. And there's so many details, like the fridge and that people talked about yeah. and yeah. stuff. Was, there was some, there's, ugh, all there's the feels went heart, into it. There's a real heart and emotion to the fact that it was all a real set, too, done on like I these think so. real. Yeah, it was done on these sound stages in England mm-hmm. on the Warner Brothers lot, which was which is super impressive. Like it seems like these days, directors, especially like the one, like the more higher profile, like. Gerwig or you know in our other case Nolan who are going for more practical effects Mm -hmm. and you know like Oppenheimer's about this you know the creation of the atomic bomb they did everything without CGI and I was surprised to find out that Greta Gerwig was also this doing the same with Barbie cool 
So I, I, you're right. Like I think it's super cool that that she they wanted to do everything practically mm-hmm. and with like minimal CGI. So what, and that and, shows so much like work and effort and passion yeah. for the movie and for it to actually look real and like kind of feel real. Yeah. So I think for the craft, yeah, yeah, definitely. As someone who's more in the industry now, does does it take more budget and all time and all this stuff to do a set that's physical versus like CGI? It's more challenging, but uh, so supposedly, supposedly CGI is like way more expensive. I've never been, really been too much within the CGI world, but it's more of a challenge to use. Like they caused an international pink shortage mm-hmm. for yeah, like that, like the pink paint shortage. Like they they actually that happened because like the set designs that they did for this, which by the way we'll get into it, but the set design is phenomenal. It really is. Yeah, Dallas, what did you think? Like, what were your so what were your first reactions to seeing Barbie? Were you like this is going to be more serious? Like, what were your? So I mean, I saw the trailer. Uh, I think the last trailer that came out, the fourth one. And uh, I, don't know, I just kind of, you know, me not being like a huge Barbie person, you know, I just thought it was going to be like another, you know, a little a movie for the girls. You yeah. Know, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm not going to see that. Like <laughs> yeah. when I saw, but then, you know, of course my fiance wanted to go see it. So yeah. I was like, well, let's go do it. Now I got to, now I got to suck it up and go, <laughs> go check it out. And then I'm glad I did. Yeah. Because I mean, it was, it, it blew me away. <laughs> but uh, and going back on that, uh, like, CGI, so, and this one being, you know, more of a physical set, you know, no, you know, computerized things, computerized Generated images. Generated images, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but CGI is, like, way more expensive. Yeah. To, like, like it's, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> like, if you... You look at like uh, the budgets for Avatar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know those. That's like heavily CGI. I mean, the, yeah, the whole movie's CGI. Yeah, it really you know? is. And uh, but for it, it to look as real or like as physical, you, you know, using CGI. Oh mm-hmm. man, that is like that is a whole another like whole another world there. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, for example, so like for example, like Oppenheimer, and so I don't know how much. Like CGI exactly is in Barbie, but Oppenheimer um, was a hundred million, and this was, so this was like what forty five million more, like than Oppenheimer, which you know, which is I, you will have to listen to the Oppenheimer podcast listeners, which is releasing after this one, which we recorded yesterday. But it's just it's interesting that like this took so much. Like, I think it's just because of the set design, how much they put into this to do on a soundstage, which, like, you know, we've been talking about the the different, you know, um, C- CGI compared to practical effects. Mm-hmm. And so. she, uh, Greta Gerwig, drew a lot of inspiration, I think, from a lot of vintage Hollywood, like, golden era movies. Yeah. Um, speaking of soundstage, I think that was another reason I heard her talking about that in interviews, that I was like, this movie is going to dial my number. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> I my I'm a grandfather who's he's passed away now. We would watch old movies together, like a lot of like Rogers and Hammerstein and stuff like that. And um I love to watch the director's commentary on those too. But there was they're able to capture your attention. This is a big pet peeve I have. <laughs> Sometimes I'll sit there and count the seconds that a frame is on this screen, but they can hold it and tell you a story without changing frames every three seconds. Hmm. And I just I really enjoy them and I thought I think Greta captured a lot of components of them, but I don't, I don't know that altogether it served the magic of, a, of an older movie. Yeah. But anyway, I, I just thought I'd mention that that was one of her inspirations. Speaking of soundstage. Yeah. Because that's where most of those older Hollywood films, especially musicals, were filmed, of course, mm-hmm. on a on a big soundstage. Right. And like a lot of the feeling that I got, which serves, which I, which is why I love the film La La Land. Speaking of Ryan Gosling, mm-hmm. which serves to that old Hollywood feel, and I definitely drew comparisons with that, you know, um, and I, I just, I really appreciate the the callbacks, and like that's why I think uh, Greta Gerwig is more of an old fashioned director, if you will. Mm-hmm. So no, I, I yeah no that was a really good point. Um, so so going back, so let's let's go back to the trailer. It said if you don't like Barbie, 
you're gonna, you have to watch this movie. What did what do y'all feel with that statement? I feel like it uh, with the if you don't like Barbie, this is you need to watch this movie because like it's not just Barbie, and it's Barbie realizing that her world is not just Barbie. Right. So I feel like it's it's pulling in Ken and pull, like you know for guys who just wanted to see the movie, y'all so y'all like literally chose yeah. Ryan over <laughs> Margo. So obviously y'all loved seeing like a guy yeah. as like a like a really cool character and like mm. a girl movie, you know? Yeah. So I feel like if you don't like Barbie, like you can see her like realizing like, wow, like my life isn't just rainbows and, you know, yeah. sparkles or whatever. But it's also like you got to see like a really cool male character. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was definitely for also for people who love like a good drama. Yeah. Too. yeah. Like there was like all these different like kind of dark components to it. Mm-hmm. Not too dark. But it's kind of painted over with a lot of like the irreplaceable thoughts of death, though. That was a little dark. I mean, I kept kind of being like, um, do you need help? Like, are yeah. you just like yeah. thinking about what is the meaning of life in light of this reality? Like, where do you fall on that? I feel like this is a little broad to just sit here and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> laugh about. I, I love, uh, yeah, I love how America Ferrera's character was like, you know, the tie in to this. And she was like the realistic cam- like character behind Barbie. And yeah, like it was a very dark element where she, you know, I guess America Ferrera's character was suicidal. I couldn't tell. It, it's like, like she just was she thinking about life broadly. We didn't yeah. get we didn't really get clarity about that. Yeah, yeah that would have been nice yeah. to have some more clarity about that. We just got more mm-hmm. that she just felt, you know, depressed or mm-hmm. sad. We didn't really get like the in depth like what yeah. exactly she mm-hmm. was thinking about. You know. Just it was rather vague on that part, but there are some pretty like dark, yeah, some dark darker. points in there, and I just see a lot of like, um, like they implemented a lot of you know things that happen in like modern so- society, right? And like kind of put that in there, some of the dark things or some of the negative things in our modern society, and they just kind of mesh that together. I thought yeah. that was I thought that was pretty interesting too. Yeah, it had like all these undertones that were like really deep. Yeah. And, and I saw a lot of kids in those theaters. Like, yeah, I, I would say, you know, it's not a, yeah, you know, bring your kids to go see Barbie, but like, it wasn't all that kid friendly, if you ask me. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of adult, a lot of adult comedy. In yeah, there, there yeah. was, which I personally, I personally loved the adult comedy aspect of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. it was definitely what, like, kind of kept me in there. Gloria, I forgot. Her name, I forgot America Ferrer's character's name, Gloria. Um, but no, the comedy is what took me by surprise. Like, what, what about like, did it take y'all by surprise? Like, the the especially the beach off scene. <laughs> well, I had seen that in the trailer, so oh. I wasn't. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was in the same trailer that I had seen. So like, I kind of knew um, what was coming, and so I at first watching the trailer, I definitely thought it was a kids movie and not like a purely adult movie. But like <laughs> watching it in the theaters, I'm like, yeah, this is this is kind of yeah, funny. yeah. That's <laughs> I, I I when I saw the trailer, that's another thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about the trailer is like I thought it was gonna be pretty kiddish. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was just gonna be kind of childish humor, you know, mm-hmm. but. Nothing, nothing childish about that yeah. humor. I mean, other than some of the, like the little, you know, doll references and like how they act like dolls. That some of that was like a little kiddish, but not like it's definitely not all kiddish. That's for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, on the trailer thing though, I felt like the if you love her Barbie, if you hate Barbie, I think they were trying to communicate that they were addressing like the endearing and then also the what people have considered problematic components of Barbie. But I also felt like that was just overt marketing, like. Please don't just don't consider this a girl movie. And yeah. I, I had like I, I've been like the local Barbie hype ambassador like <laughs> for the movie to like so many people. And um, yeah, I've I've had a lot of girlfriends be like, yeah, I don't want to go see that, or like straight up laugh that I'm so excited, like <laughs> laugh that I'm so excited about seeing um the the movie. But um, yeah, I felt I felt like that was a pretty blatant like. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely yeah. a, an advertising thing to yeah. get people in, which it, it, it worked for me. I, yeah, that I thought it was pretty smart marketing, you know. Yeah, if you hate it, come see it. If you yeah. love it, you gotta come see it. Yeah, you know? exactly. like, I, I felt like you just that was that was pretty good way, <laughs> pretty good way to go about it, you know. No, I I definitely I definitely really it definitely still brought me there too. It gave me better hope to go into it. 
What did y'all think of like, so uh, we, you know, touched a little bit on it, colors and the set decoration. I mean, did, were the colors too much for y'all? No. No, no not at all. They I, were amazing. Yeah. yeah. The kind of expected like, it. Kind uh, it was like a rainbow of pink and then that fun blue color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's another Ryan Gosling thing. Flared nostrils <laughs> is <laughs> acting secret. I also think that he looks really good against those pastel colors. Yeah. Like yeah. the pinks and the blues that they were using. I felt like he was able to like not become one with the set, but like he mad he and the set got along visually. Mm-hmm. I think that actually kind of helped us. Yeah, he became one with the set. No, I, like not really. I, I have a question. So, yeah. was Ken always like a blonde doll? I'm pretty sure. At least because I first thought one. I thought pretty like sure. Ken had brown hair. At least the first one, yeah, the right? Original. Yeah, but the, like there the are very different Kens. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's different. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah, so like, there's right. different so, Kens. Like, you know how like your sister Savannah, like she has different, like she had different yeah, kids, like she yeah. she had different kids that go with the different Barbies. Yeah. So like you know like in Toy Story they had Ken. Yeah. yeah. And he was he had brown hair. Yeah. yeah. So that like when I think of Ken like that just that's what pops kind of like mind. brownish Cause, red. Because I love Toy Story, you know. Yeah. So. That, yeah. yeah. That, that is like the only like other movie that really did good with like Ken and Barbie. Yeah, yeah, they did pretty they yeah. did pretty good with Ken and Barbie too. I yeah. Say. That was that was very well done, Michael Keaton. Yeah, it would have been funny if he cameoed as Ken in this one, Michael Keaton. That would have. Oh been yeah, if they, really if they cool. threw him in like maybe as one of the other Kens. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that would have been funny. Yeah, that would have been, been very cool. different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought on the set though. Um, oh, here's a here's a detail I noticed. There were so many details that were called out in like people analyzing the trailers or that I've like heard about since then. This is more I guess costume than set, but Margot's hair in when she's riding in the um, convertible at the beginning and, and waving, mm-hmm. her hair goes into, it looks like her wig and the little clusters that like a Barbie has. Like it, oh, it yeah. doesn't in the future wigs, but in that first one, I just thought that was such like a oh, I precious didn't little that. detail. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, you would like brush it yeah, right there. Was, there's and, always yeah. these little gaps. Because they come out of like the little holes, like it's dotted yeah. around her scalp. I didn't even oh, notice that. I did that. not That's notice cool. that either. I thank you guys. I, I noticed it myself. It's I'm not really <laughs> about that. Wow. <laughs> it's like, I, I did notice something uh, like about the hair. I was like, what, what's that for? Now that makes complete sense is like, she's a doll and they have, to have yeah. these like real life correlation, like these real doll correlations yeah. with this kind of real world. Anyway, Oops, that's cool. We're branching off from the set into like costumes a little bit, but there was a couple things that I was like, I want to buy that. Like the, <laughs> the pink Birkenstock at the end that she's wearing. I was oh, like, yeah. I need pink Birkenstock. And there's I, there's I, a pink volleyball. I do like how they like, like advertised everything. Volleyball. Or yeah. not advertise it, but like, you know, when he's throwing all the clothes off the top of the <laughs> yes, house, and they, they like put, freeze it and yeah. it like shows like, you know, the addition of the clothes and like, you know, what's it, what it, it's called. It kind of reminds you of the Toy cool. Story uh, yeah. 3 scene yeah. where he she's going through his closet and he's like, no, not that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, the, yeah. not the neighbor. And he, yeah, he, yeah. Like, he gets like all like, like, yeah, says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> comments crossed my mind as like a movie to maybe compare it to just a little bit when I um, heard that Weird Barbie is like permanently in the splits. It reminded me of that scene um, and, th- and then they said that they cut holes in the set so Kate McKinnon could put one of her legs in there and then like have a fake other leg, which I just thought was even better than actually doing the splits because yeah. like mm-hmm. the doll can't do them like people can. So that, <laughs> that looked even more like yeah. toy world realistic. Did, did y'all ever split your Barbie's legs like that? Or Dallas, that's probably a better question for you. Did you ever split the legs of a Barbie? No. I, I think, yeah, I think I have, and maybe a few limbs came off in the I process. Knew it. But did you start? You already said it. <laughs> did you Did you flatten any of the feet? No. Uh, that I, is. I, that's kind of. It, it, that would have been pretty hard, and now that yeah. I think about it, to flatten their feet. Did Did you, Did you all? Gross. Uh, no. Like flatten the feet of a Barbie? I've never Gross. experienced. A How does that even? But Barbie. I don't. I don't think that's. A, and I, I don't I think all, that's possible. I've also never seen a Barbie with silly. <laughs> wait, 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 a Barbie with Cell- a cellulite Barbie. Oh, you know, she, was, cellulite. she was getting the cellulite or whatever, and because she was drawing it, uh, America Ferrera's character yeah. Gloria. She, yeah, was drawing she was drawing those in the real world. Barbie yeah, that's and, true. And the yeah. doll and the you know the person who plays with the doll is like somewhat connected. Yeah. They're yeah. intertwined. I have something to say about. I like a question to talk about that later. Yeah. No, that is interesting. I mean, I guess that is like more of the comparison that. America Ferrera's character is actually 
more of tying herself with a mm-hmm. Barbie rather than like, you know, I guess Kate McKinnon's Barbie, weird Barbie, being was physically Gloria's destroyed. Was Gloria's Barbie. So that, so that was Gloria's Barbie. Wait, hold up. Yeah. I know. That was, so stere- stereotypical little... Barbie was uh, her daughter. I thought it was her daughter's I get, I think you Barbie. Might be right, yeah. And when they were like going to throw off, she got old enough or whatever and didn't oh, care. Yeah. Her daughter didn't care about Barbies anymore. She kept stereotypical Barbie. Because oh, you see, there's a yeah. scene where like her daughter's coming out with the box yeah. of all the dolls or whatever, but she grabbed. A yeah, Barbie so out of there, hers. and it like that stereotypical Barbie, became like became her. I guess Barbie. became her Barbie, or just a reflection yeah. of. That makes sense. I, That's why she I'm had pretty memories sure. of both. Huh? Yeah, when she like sat on the bench and closed her eyes, she saw. Uh, she, she was saw seeing it. Gloria's memories. Right. When she thought it would be the little girls. That's why she went to the school. Went first, to the little girls. She just assumed that that. That's what she was seeing, but she was seeing in the eyes of Gloria. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. that's really cool. I feel like it was just deep enough to like understand it and grasp what was going on within the story, like within to make it a deeper story than it really, you know, it should it should have been, you know, it just took it to another level of complexity. And it I was, feel like there's only so much you can do with Barbie. You know, when you think of Barbie and you think of a movie about Barbie, like what is like how can what storyline are you gonna make with a Barbie? Right. But I thought, like, the, you know, bringing the real world in with the Barbie land, like, I thought that was, like, that was great. But, yeah. I couldn't, like, when I saw the trailer, I was like, how, like, what is this supposed, where is this going to go? Right. How how far are they going to go with, you know, Barbies? Yeah. You know, but I I thought that connection, like, I mean, that was. It was was very well done. Very well done. And Barbie, I feel like whoever, I think. I found the characters in this like Toy Story. I think they have so much potential for, really, for the future. I, I like I said, I went to see this expecting lightning to strike and also expecting never to want to go see a sequel because it's really hard to do that twice. Yeah. yeah. But they had great characters, and I feel like they gave themselves a lot of room to improve or go up. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I felt like comparisons. The way I would compare it is three movies. Like so. And it just so happens that Will Ferrell's in at least two of these awesome. with Elf, uh, the Lego movie. Yeah, I was about to compare it to the Lego movie. Yeah, the Lego movie and um, Toy Story. So we have these three movies because, like, they all kind of serve the same thing with a character going into this scarier world, which is Barbie being in, you know, the, this comfortable world that is her home. She has to go and face reality, where all those other movies they do. But this... Does like does it on such a deeper level, more of like an adult level? I feel like with, you know, the thoughts of death and, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, I guess cellulite. another yeah, cellulite is a very very big adult problem. I feel like you know, yeah. <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> I right, don't you, think you don't, seven year old put me like that. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I ain't got nothing against it. I ain't got nothing against cellulite. <laughs> There you go. But on the Barbie note, too, I feel like they had, whoever wrote this story had a lot of freedom because, like, it was like, Barbie's an adaption of what? Yeah. Like, she's just kind of a beautiful blank canvas. Yeah. And so they had a lot of freedom to take the story a lot of different directions, you know? Yeah, because, like I said, like, I mean, I feel like, you know, what, how far can they go with just a bar, like, what's... What's a Barbie movie going to be about? But now, now but that also, you say like, that, yeah, Barbie yeah, movie? exactly. Like if you can't think of what Barbie would be about, that gives you yeah. all kinds of things like you can make mm-hmm. Barbie about, right. you know? Yeah. yeah. I well, think about it that way. So the film is written by couple Greta Gerwig and mm-hmm. Noah Baumbach, who has Noah Baumbach is like actually one of the like the top writers in Hollywood right now. Like, um, and of course you have this very well-known writer and director, Greta, who they both wrote this within the disparity of the COVID-19 pandemic. And they spent like two years on the script, I'm pretty sure, once they were like helmed, the, you know, were given the pen to write it. And they, it says like they took their time to do this, but they also explored like these deep things, like themes of isolation. And so like, it's kind of interesting. It's more of like a personal reflection on, what they were both thinking of on as a couple what being within COVID-19, mm-hmm. which is very interesting. And I guess a lot of like very deep themed 
films have like are starting to come out of it from this. So no, I I think I think I just thought found that was very interesting. Yeah. I oh yeah, so I I am very critical of the script and actually of the plot. Um I wanted to like copy and paste things from like the last 50 minutes of the movie into different places in the first one. Um but I felt more forgiving of it when I heard that that it was primarily written during the pandemic and probably during yeah. lockdown. Because I think Greta made a comment about having accepted the project, not sure how that works or whatever, while she was right after her first child was born, which I think was in March 2019. I did see that. And um, so that means that, yeah, she was writing it. And it, it had a lot, to me, it felt very like 2020, even like a lot mm-hmm. of the language that they used. Mm-hmm. I'm not not here to um, critique that, <laughs> the, the content of it at all, but... It was it was very overt. Like we got white savior Barbie. We got fragility comes up a lot. We got uh, I was surprised vaccination didn't come up a lot. Again, I'm I'm not trying to like engage with these topics or anything. I'm just yeah. saying like I I was getting serious 2020 energy from it. <laughs> and um, that it is a good point. Mm-hmm. And I and once I heard that that was when she was writing it, I felt more forgiving. Like she needed to like get that out there and put that in there. But at the same time, I was like there's a level of like cultural angst that came along with it. And I was like, can we keep the conversations going that are important, but can we keep that like pitch these in 2020? (laughs) Like, can we not make that cultural, like zeitgeist travel with Barbie forever? (laughs) And and I'm not like, it's kind of making me a little, not uncomfortable. It's good to be uncomfortable in good ways, but it's making me a little uncomfortable. Like, but, but we're in a theater again. (laughs) Like we're not there exactly right now. And, with that point, it makes it very dated. It sounds like you're saying it kind of puts like a, an almost like an expiration date almost on it. I don't, you know, I was also thinking like, in twenty years, like you know, we might be like, oh yeah, I remember when these things were like stuff we were learning about and stuff we were talking about. Like it might date it in like a, I think everything's probably a little dated, but yeah. in the sense that it it, it made me like. I, I read an article by a, I don't, I'm sorry, I can't credit the critic, but who said it, it came with a level of like cultural anxiety. And I was like, but I don't, I don't, I didn't go to see the Barbie movie to get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a and good I, point. I, I, I wish we could just leave that part. Yeah. Behind. They did have a lot of that. Like, uh, like I, like I said earlier, like things that, you know, happen in modern society, some of the, like the cur- cultural things that happen and like, uh, you know, even political things. Like there were some little hints of like political things, yeah. like how, you know, like, you know, they were doing the, you know, um, they had like the Barbie court and like yeah. the Supreme Court and stuff. And they were, you know, just going, you know, changing it from kin to that. Like yeah. it almost was like referencing kind of how, I don't know, not like what, you know, we should do today, but like just like, I don't know, just like a a, pol- a very a kind of slight political scent, like they could just kind of snuck it in there, you know, yeah. like a little political, little political type deal, yeah. you know. That def- definitely is a lot of things, especially these days. Oh yeah, How- and and speaking of um, Supreme Court, um, RBG passed away in 2020, so oh. I think Supreme Court it, again. I'm, I was getting all these like, yeah, this for me coming out in 2023. This I'm, I'm getting, yeah, I'm, I'm having like. <laughs> Kind of like uh, Margot was, you know, I'm having these memories. Where are they coming from? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, we were talk- this was the topic then. Yeah, which, where there was a lot of that, especially in 2020. Um, but I, okay, I loved the, co- just little, there's a lot of little things. I don't like it when, well, there's, it's, I like when things are, messages are incorporated into a story or vi- even visuals really creatively. And um, for example, I mean, just, Oh, I'll bow down to this one. Like, just having this diversity of Barbies and just calling them all Barbie, you never had to get on there and be, like, overtly say, Barbie doesn't have to be blonde, tall, and per- impossible proportions. You just literally just, like, threw a grenade in the water and we're like, these are all Barbie. End of discussion. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also loved the scene where uh, she's in the real world and she looks at the Miss Universe yeah. poster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she said, oh, the Supreme Court. And I was like, we should just, that should be on our mindset that those people could be, that probably have, or I'm just going to say like beautiful, attractive women have the capacity also to be smart and hold these positions. Yeah, and yeah, and sure. we shouldn't like make that correlation should be something we're completely comfortable with making. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they didn't like say that overtly, but 
they put it in a story just like that, and I was like, mic drop. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of s- they kind of slipped a few things in there, just like yeah. throughout the movie, just not very nonchalantly. Like it wasn't yeah. like a overt, like you're saying, it wasn't there like was, an overtly type deal. It was just kind of like yeah, I, it I was a lot of overt it. stuff. And I was like, come on, guys! Like I I expected something more creative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and more like the examples I just gave. Um, but those those were mm-hmm. yeah sneaky and like. Good. And ba- back on what you said about like Barbie being like a canvas, like that's is is that what you were saying? Like you know, yeah. this you know the diversity of it, like you know, like this Barbie just represents like a blank page almost. So yeah, is that what is that what you were, S- the point you were story giving? wise and just as far as like they say in the opening scene, like the, the what did they say? Like the energy of Barbie inhabits all these different. And they had different careers and body types, and then you get on the beach. And you're just saying hi, Barbie, to all these people with different yeah. careers and body types again. And it just kind of... Like we're all the same, basically. Yeah, it really expanded the whole... Yeah. So what about pregnant Barbie? I mean... Okay. Uh, Virginia, you, yes, you I take have feelings off, about this. You, you, I you, do. You yourself, you know, are uh, preggers. To quote Queen Elizabeth II, <laughs> who didn't like the term pregnant, uh, I'm in the family way. <laughs> Oh. Anyway, oh. apparently oh, like something that. else that doesn't like pregnant is, uh, well, okay, so the pregnant Barbie Midge IRL is kind of ick. Like, I, my, I'm, I'm expecting right now, and I thought Halloween, my husband and I could be Ken and pregnant Barbie. That would be so cute. That would be awesome. Especially since I heard, like, you know, that there is a pregnant Barbie. Then I Googled it, and I was like, and her stomach pops off, and then there's, and I was like, I'm, I'm getting weird vibes. <laughs> like, this is, I'm not oh, gonna. I'm just that. not gonna be pregnant. Barbie. I just thought yeah. it was a Barbie that just had. Yeah, a just had. Yeah. Whoa, what what in it? the world? I don't. I think there's a couple maybe iterations of it, oh, but yeah. uh, I'm not gonna be pregnant Barbie for Halloween. But I felt like they really slighted pregnant Barbie, especially in a w- movie about women, about feminism. Yeah. At the beginning, and at the end, um, because Helen Mirren says in the first line, "Let's ignore her" as they pan past Midge. Um, pregnant and waving uh, as we enter Barbie land they say let's ignore her Mattel discontinued her a pregnant Barbie is just too weird and it is weird but I feel like we didn't need to call her that yeah, yeah. I agree that is a good point it did, they didn't have to go so far as to call her weird like you yeah. said yeah no that's actually like a really good point that I I didn't think of like why is she being called weird for being pregnant and it happens at the end too there's no like progress in that yeah. Department. I can't remember what the reference to her at the end is. Uh, oh, Will Ferrell's character just runs past her and is like, "Oh, we just like, yeah, she gets, oh. I was like, scared. "Why I is seeing a pregnant lady her. making yeah. you go like that? Yeah. Like, even if you feel like that, it's it's the point is everybody's a human and they need to be treated with respect." Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was kind of like not a cultural thing that needed to be taken away yeah. from the movie. Yeah. I was gonna say, like, you know, so I have a baby boy on the way. My fiance is pregnant. Congratulations! Aww. You know, to me, there's nothing more beautiful in this world than a pregnant woman. So Spoken like a true man. So yes. it just kind of, I thought it was a bit weird too. You know, they were just, kinda, they kind of brushed that off. Mm-hmm. As, you know, as the movie is, you know, such a very woman power, like, you know, you know, things like that, that kind of threw me off a bit. Like they yeah. kind of did it in the wrong way. Because it, al- like for me, like it almost, and I'm not just trying to suck up here. It sounds like I am, but the most powerful woman seems to be like a pregnant woman, like kind of, kind the of most powerful st- and the most vulnerable. Yeah, like simultaneously. Yeah, which is like you know, it's like you don't want to mess with like something that's both powerful and and at the same time, like you said, vulnerable. And like this is just a real part of like reality. And you know, like you know, if we're gonna make like a blank canvas of like a Barbie. You know, you know, like they they even have like the Barbie that is in a wheelchair that mm-hmm. they showed in here, and I did see that, they yeah. they have you know like I know another like toy line, American Girl doll. They have like all these uh, dolls with like hearing aids and glasses. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, I loved having the inclusivity on a level, but yeah. Mm-hmm. But when you call a a Barbie that's pregnant weird and really like hark on it like yeah. that, and if you take that further down. They called the uh, messed up, like, the girl who had the cut hair and marker, they called her weird. Oh, the so weird if, Barbie, yeah. if they are calling both of them weird, one is messed up. Yeah. And so that's just that's just kind of... Yeah, and then, like, but she comes back, too, right? And then she, she comes, comes back, back, but just yeah, does And looks Mitch. better. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, the weird Barbie. So the one that yeah, the weird Barbie that rocks comes the, back. That rocks the splits pretty well. Yeah. I must say. She works in sanitation now, which yeah. is mm-hmm. her works dream. in sanitation. <laughs> and did, they, did they include the pregnant but, Barbie at the end? She was in there. She was in there. She, was she got there. a little but not, shout out. Yeah, she got a little thing, but not like a, you know, not 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 nearly as. Yeah, I just they, thought they didn't it was like weird. put her on her. Not saying they had to put her on a pedestal, but yeah. they they didn't they like her. nothing changed there. Yeah. Like like you said, like nothing changed. It just kind of was like she was always the yeah. weird one all the way through. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Uh, like okay, <laughs> even if you feel that way, I mean, I, I got to be honest. Like some, I'm. A human is growing inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's weird. Yeah, but, <laughs> but like you do not get to treat another human that way. But to yeah. me, that's not weird because like <laughs> it's normal. None of us would be on this planet if it wasn't yeah. for their mom, not pregnant for women. Brave people. Like, right. what? Well, you know, also like when we go into this, so segueing into like our next like kind of topic, when you're trying to empower like individuals, like a heart, like, you know, calling, like, this pregnant Barbie we- weird, you know, like, that's kind of the opposite of what this film is trying to do. Like, exactly. Like, fighting, yeah. you know, fighting the patriarchy, mm-hmm. which I feel like, you know, is kind of put into the same mold, if you were to ask me, is almost like, you know, men find, it's like, normally you would say men find women who are pregnant weird or creepy, which I feel like the movie kind of did that itself. It did. It did. Yeah, yeah. So well I said. Yeah, so I that's that's just kind of that were my thoughts on it. Yeah, but Thank you. no. So, what did y'all think about the aspect of you know? And I'm you know, go you know, watch myself here. <laughs> Whenever we talk, so the this film going into it, I knew it was going to be about breaking down the patriarchy. Do y'all feel like it really did truly break it down? Do y'all feel like it really truly break broke it down? I, I personally thought it was very clever with being like it flipped its narrative a few times. I thought it was kind of clever, and obviously, like in Barbie Land, the roles are flipped. Yeah, yeah. So, well, in Barbie Land, they brought the patriarchy down. You know, so like you know, Ken, you know, thinking you know, man, the world is ran yeah. by men and horses. Yeah. Which is <laughs> well, they brought the funny. matriarchy down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they. He brought that into Barbie Land. They tore that completely down in Barbie Land, but it was still nothing changed in the real world. Right. Obviously. Like, but it was all everything changed in Barbie Land. Right. Mm-hmm. So like Will Farrell's character, like earlier in the movie, he's or I think it was at the end, I'm not sure. Like when, when Will Farrell's in Barbie Land. Yeah, that's later. Or actually I think it's when he's they're in the real world and he's talking like, Well, we had a woman president or a woman CEO in nineteen. Yeah, he's like we, we have one of those. So we had at least two. Yeah. You know, so he's yeah. you know, like he was yeah. but <laughs> so nothing really changed in the real world. But in Barbie Land it completely I mean it flipped and then it flipped back to like yeah. normal Barbie land. But yeah. So you said you knew going into this it was going to be about patriarchy or that was going to be a topic that was discussed. How, I didn't I didn't get that going into it oh, even as mean, much. I so had, how did you how did yeah, you pick up on that? Yeah. Uh, what was it? Either you know when I I looked it up. I love looking at like the cast and like I was like who's in Barbie again? And it was just kind of like the the bio of or like what do you call that? You know, you see the little things on IMDb. It's like, you know. Like the character Bar- description. Like yeah. each, you read what each yeah. character, their role that they're playing. Not really that. It was more of like just, you know, the 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 title of it. You know, then it has a little brief description yeah, the, like the general, of the movie. Oh, okay, I see, oh yeah. I see what you're Thank saying. You, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It, it, was, it was basically like that. So, you, so, Rebecca, did you see, did you know going in that it was going to be about a movie like about Tearing down the patriarchy. I had seen like the clips of like the fight scene on the beach, and I like I had uh, like heard about Ken kind of taking over, but I didn't know completely. Like I thought it was just like like I remember one of the like I don't know if it was the narrator narrator saying it, mm-hmm. but she was saying like something about Barbie, you know, having the uh, like the confusion with herself or something, and then it like you know it went to Ken, and it was like and Ken's just Ken or. Whatever. <laughs> you know, so like I didn't really know that the patriarchy was gonna be mixed in with that, um, but I knew that there was gonna be like a fight scene and yeah. like all this crazy stuff happening between Ken and Barbie. What'd y'all think overall, just like of Ken being 
brought into the real world and seeing like the the patriarchy of the real world like i thought it was hilarious that, oh like, it's hilarious I loved but his i mean he's yeah. he's got this sort of like um, you know he's he's kind of oblivious yeah. yeah you know like he's he he he's never seen something like this before yeah. like, like, horse, like a, a man are, in charge yeah. and he horse. See, yeah a man on a horse <laughs> and he was think like he didn't quite understand yeah it. he just didn't yeah. get it well like, he, he even didn't. mentions that too like yeah. in the beginning he's like Turns out, like, horses are not part of the patriarchy. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Did, he found that out. But, like, you know, he's going, like, steal books from the library and stuff. Like, all these men, men yeah. rule the world books and, like, all that. And he goes back and he tells all the other kins, like, yeah. you know, uh, some woman asked me for the time. Yeah. You know, and they were like, <gasps> dude, no. <what? laughs> like, it was just like, yeah. he's just oblivious. Like, he, he he's... In a, in a sense, you know, dumb. Yeah. He's just dumb. He d- He's he just a dude. Like, like I, I personally, like, you know, like, if I probably would have been like that, too. Like, dude, a girl just asked me what time it was. Like, because he never yeah. sees, like, it's, you know, he's asking for the time. In yeah. Brian, like, or, you know, if they have a time. But I'm yeah. just saying, like, in in those certain scenarios, it'd be opposite in Barbie land. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. ladies, what did y'all think, like, the stance of the feminist aspect of the film. I didn't, like I said in the beginning, like I didn't uh, completely appreciate how they just had him like completely ob- oblivious the whole time because I know men aren't actually like completely oblivious. Yeah. But I did really enjoy his excitement about the little things because like it kind of is like he was, he's a, okay, so he's a, li- a young child's doll, right? Yeah. So if like, if his person was a young boy or a young girl, they'd be excited about horses and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I thought that That's aspect a good point, yeah. was really yeah. cool. Like he was interested in like horses. It wasn't like guns and tanks and stuff. It was horses and yeah. western. Yeah. And so I thought Yeah, that it was, was kind of western. Yeah. You know, like he was seeing all that the manly Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Like it's like that's like how the it horses been. were manly, yeah. That's how it would have been. Horses are an extension of men. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Like, I thought that was hilarious, but I was also like, where is this coming from as far as, like, why did Greta pull this in? Are we are we kind of dragging, like, Westerns for their for the issues that they have in them? Or I think it might have been a little bit of a reference to something called Midnight Cowboy that I'm not really familiar with. It was a 1969 uh, film yeah, yeah. where yeah. this yeah. guy yeah. goes to New York and he's, mm-hmm. like, a cowboy and he thinks mm-hmm. he's going to just be irresistible and all this stuff I, I don't know if, if that was part of it it was I didn't have any reference point for it I thought it was just funny I appreciated it for yeah. funny mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's personally as a guy I yeah. kind of got it I was like whoa you mean we get to if like if I were Ken I was like you mean we get to be cowboys like just all the time and if we're a cowboy we're like we rule the world yeah. it's kind of like it's almost like boyish thoughts yeah you know like it's like whoa that's so cool but he, he was almost like a kid yeah like a, a young boy who is like growing, you know, gets to that, you know, gets to a preteen. Like as he grows mm-hmm. older in age, like that's how he was interpreting the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's like you know, obviously he's a doll. Yeah. But he had his mindset was of a of a child, a small boy child, like growing up. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you kinda, I get what you, you mean. You see some things and you're like, oh, that means that. There's but gr- then when there's you a lot get of older, within his character. Yes. But then when you get older and you look back on things, you're like, oh, wait. That's, like, why, why was I thinking? Yeah. What was I thinking yeah, about? Yeah. What that? was I thinking? And you see that in the movie. You know, like he yeah. kind of like matures yeah. on, a, think, on a level. I think, um, I thought they kind of made a leap from Ken landing in the real world and understandably feeling like seen and a, like like someone asking for the time like feeling like I felt kind of bad for him like oh man you <laughs> this yeah. life's kind of rough if yeah. you ha- like he says that you know I've, I've got a little respect here which I think a male human a female human whatever human should have respect should be respected for sure. um, but I thought they then they made this leap that I didn't quite think was justified in his character from him being being that to being yeah, crazy about the patriarchy. Hmm. I thought there was kind of this character development gap. I thought there needed to be something that happened yeah. between him and Barbie that catalyzed him wanting to become, I think the word toxic is slapped around too much, but <laughs> so toxic in a way. But I thought it didn't quite fit with the character I had met. Um, yeah. And so I thought character development-wise and storyline-wise, uh, things start for me to, to really go downhill fast from here. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Like he should have been, like, so you're saying he should have been more toxic rather than more just damaged and driven by the, his female counterpart. Well, I, th- I think we don't quite understand why he went to that extreme. Right. As quickly as he did. It's just kind of this little sequence where he kind of goes from being like Ken, who's understandably happy to be seen and respected to Ken, who's going to like. Right. Cause like beyond the, patriarchy. Because the, the men, because in the, the back to your point, Rebecca, you, you feel like you felt like, you know, he, he, you felt like he could have been stronger. Yeah. We could have seen more of his character. Like, like she said, develop. Like, right. Yeah. You see him like really like young and happy. And then he gets older and he's just kind of making like really quick decisions and is like quick to react to like just the little things. Yeah. Like, yeah. To take him, him it's just like, he's control. just doing things, but we don't understand anymore the character behind it. Yeah. You know, and it's I just think, like this I think puppet he, doing these yeah. actions that we need to talk about, but it actually didn't fit the story. I feel like he himself, like his character didn't understand either. Yeah. You know, like, he was just, like, like he himself did not understand. And, like, just kind of, like... Because you see in the movie, like, when Barbie uh, comes back and all the stuff is kingdom. And yeah. his mm-hmm. mojo dojo... <laughs> mojo casa. Casa. I love that. That's, I want a mojo dojo casa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you see all that, and then, like, he's trying to make her, make her his... Uh, long term, no commitment. Yeah, girl, f- girl, low f- commitment, low yeah. commitment, no <laughs> long term. Some I don't know. Yeah. I forget the saying it was exactly. So funny. But you see, when Barbie looks away from him, you see a part, the other side of him still wants to be that old Ken who just yeah. wants her attention yeah. and wants to like just yeah you know wants her to notice him yeah like, like you saw, he makes like a facial gesture yeah. and it's like, like a, he wants her to be his queen it kind of yeah yeah it, but but then he but then he plays it off all cool and stuff yeah. and then every time she comes back to him after it's you know kingdom he you know she comes back and you know they're they're doing their plan to like take back over barbie land or yeah. whatever from ken and he has to like excuse himself for a second yeah and go back around the corner and, scream. and like you know do something or like Go find a book and like he opens the door. He's like, "You caught me reading," you know. Like he, he's making it up. But, like he, I just feel like he himself doesn't understand. Like yeah. he's just trying to do it to get Barbie's attention, but right. also he's trying to like I don't know. It's like on two different fronts here. It's 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 very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Well, it looks I, I think interesting. it just didn't all fit together. Yeah, uh, just it, something it makes it it makes it kind of like conflict each the other. Human develop uh, at this point. I feel like uh, someone commented on YouTube that they were glad they were gonna just. Dis- um, maybe, maybe this isn't exactly how they said it, but they were glad that they were going to watch a story that was going to address all these topics and not just like sit through a lecture. But I, I, for some reason, I felt like I landed in a lecture at this point and the story was lost and the character development and, and, and a sense of understanding the characters was also just like. Yeah, that, it was yeah. Like, that's an interesting way to look at happened? it. Was it a story or a lecture on social Commentary. I, yeah. I did find myself confused. Which all I think art is. <laughs> yeah. A commentary Definitely. on a level. Well, well, for <laughs> sure. For if you're sure. not going to get yeah, out absolutely. of it, and it but should, I, I, should I be have done to well, say I did find myself done. confused at some points. Like you said, like I just didn't know where this was going. Where was but, the commentary? But, but not going? in like a good way. Like yeah, but it, it kind of like like some of the things tied back in the end of things that they were talking about before. Yeah. Like things they were talking about in the middle of the movie kind of came back in the end but mm-hmm. it, it didn't change like like you said yeah. like it didn't like it didn't develop it just went back to the same thing yeah. right but they yeah, so but they still th- threw it in they still threw it in at the end to make you understand something that happened in the middle yeah you know? yeah that is interesting because like you know the the roles were supposed to be reversed and I feel like they weren't truly reversed like within that sense. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Ken, like all the men within it were supposed to like represent women, right? Within the Barbie land. Mm-hmm. And it just, it didn't, it didn't feel like that too much to me. It felt like, you know. Like compared to the real world, like now. Yeah. I, I, like it wasn't, I it wasn't an alternate. Because like with the men, with like the men in Barbie land, none of them had occupations. But like women in the real world, we have occupations. So I feel like it, like, you know. And it's like more easier. And like Ken was saying, like he 
doesn't even have like a special, even just like a little side occupation. Like he's not even a lifeguard. He's a he's he's just he's beach. beach. He's just beach. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. But like even on the flip side, when none of the Barbies, like all of them, just kind of sat around and they were like accessories, like that didn't work out either. So it's like even if you flip, you can't disregard the other. Gender. Yeah, you can't disregard. Anybody. Yeah, because because no. even like all the kins were still like guys to an extent, yeah. especially like it was they were all mainly boys because like, you know, as a guy, like I would have yeah. I would have been like, can we please watch The Godfather? And can I comment the mm-hmm. whole way through? Yeah, like it did play <laughs> yeah. these par- it did play these parts really well. But that, yeah. again, at that point of the story, I guess it was uh, that's when it did switch. But yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it wasn't a good representation of like a complete switch both before yeah. and like after. I don't know. Are afterwards. we talking about like uh, Barbie Lane, like Barbie at the Lane. beginning and the end of the movie? Yes. Oh yeah, like I feel like there, like there was actually no progress. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah that's like right. It, and yeah. again, there's no development. Margot yeah. Robbie talked in an interview. She's like, "Well, you know, Barbie World is actually like more than feminist. It's more than like fit. It's the equality is is not equality. Power is tipped in the favor of the women." But actually, kind of what they show is like, and I was like, would we, wouldn't we have a conversation that's more nuanced about, for example, we we wouldn't want to justify us keeping other countries destabilized in order to maintain our own power, but yet that's what the Barbies do to the Kens to try to maintain their own power. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. Now, neither group took power in in the right way or something, but I'm not sure. Mm. There was no there was no resolution at the end, and the the means were. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they, they yeah. still fell they, apart. They did and I actually thought they were juvenile. Like we went from this like great conversation about like, and I'm I'm in my 30s. I I like I want to watch, <laughs> I want to watch a movie about, um, a 30 something woman's experience. And I thought addressing these like, the complicated things that Barbie is experiencing was kind of a great way to do that. But then we jump back into this world where. It felt like we were following a middle school plot line, like yeah. girls yeah. versus the boys. I'm gonna flirt with you, and then I'm gonna stab you in the back. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. right what? after right after we talk about you know like these stresses of life, like with the cellulite, you know, like you know we have that, and then we have exactly what you're saying with this middle school like feel to a to a film. Yeah, I, that's and then. Um, the song I'm Just Ken, I wanted to like copy and paste it earlier. I felt like if that song had happened before, like as he was returning oh. into Barbie land, um, we would have like felt this building angst that would have helped us understand why he was motivated to do this, which we can make the assumption, but the story didn't develop his character in such a way that I felt like yeah. we saw Ken actually taking those actions. Yeah. And then the whole, I thought it was weird because the two Kens were pitted against each other. But then they go into the song and they come out of it holding hands. And I was like, but what happened during the song? I don't. Yeah. It was a weird use of a song. It for was kind of weird. Like they just all. So like the whole movie, they're like, they're jealous of each other. Yeah. And that was like the thing that the Barbies played on them was make them, you know, make the Kins, you know, jealous of each other. Like how they're all playing the songs on the beach the yeah. same song, <laughs> which is <laughs> it's three, a, that's three. actually a good song, though, man. Like I love. Yeah, that yeah. I'm song. just kidding. Yeah, yeah, same. No, what, no, no. What, the, what the, the song that they're playing on the guitar, uh, push, oh. push. I think it's called push, yeah, yeah. and that's I Matchbox like Twenty. That yeah, yeah. Is that Matchbox Twenty? I think so. Matchbox. It's like I've I've definitely like heard that. Yeah, song. Yeah, it's Matchbox Twenty. Wait. I'm pretty sure it's Matchbox. Yeah, and it's called Push. I have to I have to look that up. But uh, like that's actually I love that song. But anyway, that like they're using so they're all singing the same song, and then all the Barbies are getting up and mm-hmm. going to a different Ken to hear them play that song. <laughs> so it's just like they're making trying to make them jealous, because and then you see before all that happened when it was Barbie Land and everything was all fine and dandy with you know Barbie and Barbie Land, uh, you know it was the Ken one of the Kens would go and dance with Barbie. And, uh, you know, Ryan Gosling's kin Mm -hmm. would be like, oh, you know, hold my drink. Like, I'm going, you know, then he's got to jump in, you know. Right. So, yeah. I thought for being a feminist and then also for going through this, like, um, emotional evolution in a way, she didn't she didn't handle kin well, in my opinion, like. For a while, I was like, well, maybe they aren't in an exclusive relationship. It's defined as girlfriend and boyfriend. But I think it is exclusive because 
when Ken like says, you know, are you sure about the other Ken? And she's like, we're just friends. She's kind of like reassuring him. Our relationship is exclusive, but then she doesn't really like him. And if she's going through this emotional thing, like Ken, there's some point where he has the power, but he's still whining that he doesn't have Barbie and he still cares about her. I feel like she just needs to go be like, I, I'm sorry, I don't care about you like yeah, this. Like, like mm -hmm. if you have this, <laughs> these emotional guts and if you're a feminist in your career, you need to bring that over into how you handle your relationships. Yeah. Too. They do say throughout the movie, it's, it's Barbie and Ken. Yeah. You know, so like, I feel like, I don't know, she, she says it herself and then Ken says it. Yeah. You know, but it's Barbie and Ken. Yeah. So, like you said, it's not like you, you don't know if they're like in an, an exclusive relationship, but then she like reassures him that yeah. of the other kid. So, kin. they must be. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, it, yeah. but they never come but out and she just say that. Why yeah. is she in this relationship yeah. with him when she doesn't care about how he feels or doesn't care, yeah. actually care yeah. for him? And but, like, know. then, like, how did the movie end? Like, where, where, you know, where was their, the state of their relationship by the end? Well, like, I was confused. It, yeah. Ken, yeah. Ken yeah. was just Which is Knuff. not hard to confuse yeah, he was me. Just okay, I am that t shirt got laughs. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. That, that was cool. I, 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 kind of, I was like, I kind of want that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't attend a full theater showing of it, but I, I did not think it was funny enough. I did not think there was enough really? clips. But the Knuff consistently got. <laughs> got laughs. Oh, so here's you're saying like throughout, like there wasn't enough quips. Not enough quips. Really? No. Oh, I thought well, it was. We and I thought some of the, when when Kate Kate McKinnon kisses like a cat while she's being weird, Barbie. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, that was great. And Will Ferrell says a couple lines like. Well, Ferrell about, does have good lines. Yeah, you know, well, I have yeah. Jewish friends or something like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, was I, like, I felt like that was ad-libbed. I actually thought yeah. they yeah, needed more, like, stand-up comic energy if they were going to build this as a comic. I know the movie Bridesmaids, they had a lot of um, comedians on it, and they had moments when they were just yeah. like, just riff, riff with your lines, just go, just yeah. come up with something. And I think that's one reason the movie feels so dynamic and funny is because the, the humor in it was pretty fresh. I wish they'd had more... Yeah. yeah, comedians like that throughout it. I feel like my favorite quotes throughout different movies is always the ad lib ones. Yeah, really, they are. Yeah, like, the one, the ones that they just kind of yeah. throw in, and yeah. like it's not a part yeah. of the script until yeah. they get out of hand. Please, one yeah. day though, whoever's doing the, <laughs> the the commentary or the special edition or the next, uh, next you didn't Barbie. know behind the scenes. Uh, please tell me which lines were. Yeah. <laughs> if any <laughs> lines were ad libs, oh, I see. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, they can email us later. Especially like the. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have Jewish yeah. friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know that definitely did look did look. Ad lipped, but yeah, no. And I was confused with. I don't know if we're jumping to the ending yet, but I was confused. I was like, Barbie, are you breaking up with him? Like, what's yeah. happening? And even when the, I, I, I think Cheers, Cheers was great. Um, but I thought she technically, kind of did, because she became human, and now she's yeah. in the but real world. Okay. Ken's not in the real this world anymore, I'm so it's no longer like, Barbie and Ken. It's just Barbie. Yeah, but did or, she leave well, her and name go is, to the real world? Her name is Barbara, Barbara Handler. permanently. Yeah, like she. She is a human. She, See, and then that's why her, the creator Ruth, that. the creator Ruth was telling her, now you know what comes along with being human, which is talking about, you know, death. Like you will grow old and die. I yeah. thought the references they throw, to death were just weird but, and like never but look, addressed. But I then didn't they get threw in, that's what she was saying. In the middle, when they first got to the real world, they threw in that old lady at the bus stop. Okay, I've got to say. And she looked at her, Margot looked, or, you know, yeah. Barbie looked at the old woman and said, yeah. you were just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I, and I like, actually loved. Like, she maybe saw, she felt like. She wanted she to get old. She wanted to grow old. She want, and, and then, you know, the old lady was like, I know, sweetie. Like, I know I'm beautiful. Which would have been like, I'm like, I kind of have like Southern manners. I'm like, the right answer is thank you. <laughs> Not, I know. <laughs> yeah. But she had such a warm smile. Yeah. Uh, I actually thought like, something that we didn't get to see much in this movie, like that wasn't articulated for all the things that were articulated loudly was kind of the relationship with, with older people. Like when Barbie runs into, um, is it Ray or Rhea? Ray, Ray I think. But, I actually don't know. It's Danny right. DeVito's uh, yeah, wife. Yeah, Danny DeVito's wife. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I should have. We'll I call her been. Carla from two years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's right. <laughs> I did see that. Like when she runs, I felt like that was actually just a very human and f kind of female to female moment. Like an older woman yeah. like just sharing her centeredness and her wisdom and perspective with this someone who's kind of having this moment of being yeah. a little bit unhinged. Um, I, th I thought the way they presented age and aging and the relationships that can happen there. I read an article recently that said that 
older people are happier. It was like, your body might be falling apart, but you're happier. And huh. I was like, you've, you've that, come to that's something reality, that like, I don't know. You've come to grasp of like, you know, just who you are. Well, yeah. like, you know, that's your connection with, you know, body and mind. Yeah. You know, your mind, you know, I, th- you know, my personal opinion, you know, your mind is more powerful than your body. Yeah. You know, like obviously Very your mind true. drives your body, but yeah. your mind is where, you know, that's everything. Yeah. You know? No, that's a good point, Virginia. Like, I don't think they meant they're meaning to have like a discussion about women and women's stories, and their. I think about their experience. That's what I want to think the movie was about and focus on. And I thought, yeah, just this moment with having these conversations with these older ladies was a really great part of a female experience. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we have been talking a lot. I feel like we do need to get into the categories, but. Um, we've honestly, we've talked about like all the tidbits, you know, like part of the pod is we, we talk about the tidbits that I've found on IMDb, Wikipedia, whatever. We've talked about everything, honestly, but there's still so much to talk about within this. But the only thing, I mean, like, honestly, we've already talked about Amy Schumer and Anne Hathaway being considered as the role in Barbie. It's this film has been in talks. Like it was announced in 2009. By Universal Pictures. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah, know Yeah, like they were, like the film has been in talks since 2009, which more than more than 10 years ago. Honestly, that's Like insane. with Greta and... Not with Greta, like multiple directors you, you, have been... Okay, so you're just saying like the, the movie Barbie. Like Mar- yeah, Mattel, almost said Marvel, wrong production company. Yeah. Mattel. I think they're trying yeah, to be Marvel. Yeah. Uh, because they're planning, I think, to make... A story for lots of their different toys. Yeah. Oh, you're um, right. I've, I've yeah. heard Polly Pocket. Polly Pocket, yeah, and then like yeah. Beanie Babies yeah. or something. Exciting. What? Wait, 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 what's... Y'all should let me proof the script, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, hit hit Virginia. Up. Come on. Everybody. Seriously, <laughs> lots of notes here. I love it. Um, I could. I love to nitpick. Uh, hey, we've we've and seen it. You're very very I, I critical. Have, You've even said I have, it yourself. I have a lot more pages to go. Very analytical. Really do. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, fascinated with the idea that humans created dolls, which in turn imitate human feelings that were in constant con- uh, conversation with inanimate objects, while also conveying an affirmative message to the audience just to be yourself and know that's enough. That's how this was like written by Greta, which I just thought that was interesting. I just felt like noting that within like. The tidbits. Uh, I don't know if it follows that. I mean, you know, just be yourself and know that you're enough. Yeah, they kind of do that. They did. But they, yeah, they but finish with that. They finish with that, but it's not like... That's not what the heart of it was said. Not it's not. It's not very it's reinforcing not what Ruth, It's not what Ruth way. said. Yeah. And then even at the end, like, when yeah, they finish with it, all of the Barbies, but Barbie doesn't finish with that. She went, goes ahead and changes exactly what she was... To be what something completely different yeah. than what she was almost created like to that be. she was created to almost be almost that she was unhappy with what she was yeah so I feel like or else she's on this journey where she doesn't know what she is but she's yeah. gonna yeah and then so her answer was become human like yes. it, it just I don't know it just kind of threw yeah. it. it just it follows that loosely yeah I, I feel say. like yeah. everybody loosely. else kind of yeah. it's got there to that point at the end it's there but it's loosely yeah if there. I had to summarize the I'm very distressed about the plot and the themes and the confusion of it all. <laughs> but if I had to summarize it, I I prefer to see the wom- the movie as a journey from like girl to woman. Yeah. Emotionally. Yeah, that's a because good point. Because she's already there as a woman like professionally. She they open with saying, you know, she has her own money and her own career and own, but internally she's <laughs> she's got a Yeah. That's that's Well, a, she's got a lot of becoming human to do and it makes sense that she didn't have that cuz she's a doll. Yeah, that's a much better. That makes much better sense than what I feel like we've all landed on is that this movie actually made. Like, but this quote, I think, is what Mattel probably like pitched to them when they started. Yeah, was going for initially. Like, mm-hmm. You're enough. You don't have to be a Barbie. Yeah, which is great, but yeah, that's not what it evolved into. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like you know, it, like these dolls are like art. It's some. It's a. It's a person. Putting their thought and their emotions into this inanimate object. Yeah. Interesting. So um, those were like just some of the few things that um here's here's actually one. Um composer Mark Ronson wrote 
Uh, I, I love Mark Ronson. Speaking of, oh, I'm just interrupting. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. But I thought that something that could have been done better in this film was like there, there are a lot of good men in the world. Yeah. And they could have represented them somewhat, somewhere in the film. I mean, even the moment when Ryan Gosling is says to that man, "You're not doing patriarchy very well." I kind of wish the guy had just been like, "Thank you." <laughs> like, just I wish there had been like a little more representation of yeah. like, like someone who has sense about them and is is trying to be like more positive with, mm. or just yeah, more more equal. I heard yeah, someone like, say like, like you know, yeah. positive Barbie in a way is like this that, extreme you know? world, yeah. but the way they approached the real world was actually pretty extremist too. Yeah, um, which it has its own problems. I love the quote. Be careful how you see the world. It is that way. Yeah. Because um, it's just true. But I wish that had happened more. And I just totally lost my great train of thought because I'm pregnant. <laughs> it, it I'm happens. right blaming it, it on that. <laughs> <laughs> it happens other times too. But. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, Mark Ronson. Yeah. Oh, there Mark we go. Ronson. Sorry. Mark Ronson. It just it takes yeah, a minute. It's, 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 what, what? And I keep saying I'm taking the Oh, so you found prenatal. your train of thought. Yes. Mark Ronson, I've, I've heard from a lot of comments, including from Lady Gaga, that he is really someone that women really enjoy working with and feel yeah. respected working with. And, he really, and he's a great producer and writer. Yes. So I thought it was really cool that he was in on the, the soundtrack. It was, yeah, within the creative con- work on yeah. this, mm-hmm. which is super cool. The pop songs were great on this, speaking of the soundtrack, but there's this riff, dun 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 Yeah. Something like that. I'm, I'm, please, I'm sorry I said that on the podcast. <laughs> but I know, well, I know yeah, what you're, what you're it just, about. Yeah, uh, it just, after a point, I was like, okay, do you have another song? <laughs> like, yeah, that's there was too. There was a, it got a little redundant, and I was like, okay. They hmm. changed it up enough. Well, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, but they changed it up enough to where it kind of, was the main theme. It was the main theme. So yeah. I appreciate it. I would have liked a little more like soundtrack. Yeah. Non vocal music. I'm trying to think. I'm blanking on what other movie recently that we watched. I think it was Babylon. Or no, it was like, like La La Land. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of did that same thing. La La Land, the music was such a big hit. I play piano and I was. I ended up playing it a lot. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually super redundant. And in the movie, after a point, you're like. All right. Okay, here we go Anything again. else? <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> I know. Here we go again. I felt the same way. It was also brilliant, so. <laughs> brilliant and redundant. Well, what I was saying about Mark Ronson is he wrote the song, I'm Just Kin, just as a joke. And he just recorded a demo for Greta Gerwig, not seriously expecting it for it to be included. Really? Which yeah. I think... We all love the I'm Just Kidding I've got to say, I'm almost yes. bitter that it's been playing in my head for like three yeah. days straight. Yeah. I'm like, get out. <laughs> that was it's the best really part catchy. of the movie, bro. I, it, I, was, <laughs> it, was, it was honestly a really good representation of it's, guys, the, the too, way, I feel like. The oh, beat, really? like everything. Yeah. The, like, it was awesome. I think yeah. I already said its placement in the story was all wrong to me. Like, it didn't Yeah, you did. Yeah. Say didn't that. fit plot-wise or yeah. character development-wise. I just wanted to, like, copy-paste it and put it there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It was, yeah, but you're God, right. Okay. It was poor placement. You felt like it was, I want to hear more about how y'all kind of identified with it. Wait, so just to be clear, that that song was at, that wasn't, that wasn't the song that they were fighting. Uh, It kind of, it was. Yeah, it, 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 it was. They were fighting and then it became the song. You know, they're like. So they, they were fighting, and they were doing... Well, they kind of reconciled. They all when it, when like, it switches when to when the room that, with the multicolors, yes. that's when it goes like back to the battle, and they like reconcile, and we don't get it, why that the story needed to be in the Yeah, I feel like, I feel like it would have been... And now they're getting along. I feel yeah. like there would have been more of like a narrative rather than like a ballad. You know, like there would have, it would have been like... They would have done that before, just kind of choreographed. I don't know. So, I, I'm, I'm mixed on like where it is. Mm-hmm personally like the placement of the song yeah okay speaking of songs though what was up with that thing when <laughs> barbie visits the boardroom where will ferrell is and um all the or all the i don't know if they're on the board whatever all the other executives there say sweden after he says sweden did i misunderstand that or like what was that about i actually well, thought we were about to get into a rap song with will ferrell and the board and they were just going to do this little a quick little thing. Yeah, well, a little. I th- Mel Gibson. I, the thing Mel about with all like so like the corporate type deal like so Will Ferrell's the CEO and they all do exactly what he does or like yeah. they're like kiss, yeah. they're kiss asses. They could have done yeah. that. They could have you know played saying? into that like, more. Yeah. They could have made that light, made that last longer. and made it really funny. Yeah, and yeah. then they they I think when they're traveling to Barbie mm-hmm. Land. They do they do little things where they like they repeat what he says, but they all do it together. So yeah. it almost sounds like a chorus. 
Yeah. I would have liked to play into that more, and that would have yeah, also yeah. given it like the fifth, yeah, that would have been, been cool. Good... That would have been cool. Like their their side of like, and then their song because. I'm not saying, you know, obviously it's and not... And had a, that table to dance yeah. yeah. It's not a, mu- oh, it's not a musical, yeah. but it, it has musical, you know, elements. parts. It, yeah, musical elements, musical parts. Like, you know, sometimes the whole scene is a song, you yeah. know, which, you know, the whole movie isn't. So I guess you wouldn't classify that as yeah. a musical. It was, it, she was, it wasn't very like it was inspired musical. by musicals. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. she it, said, like, it, I, I think Singing in the Rain came up a lot, she being Greta. Um, yeah. 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 It and definitely she, had that aspect. Yeah, she said sure. she had a lot of the background people, their background was dancing because she felt like they captured a kind of movement that she wanted to like bring into the screen. Yeah. I think that's kind of how I feel about having more comedians on it. Like I, I really wanted Tiffany Haddish to be in the um, Oval yeah, she Office. Would, she would have been good. Wouldn't she have been good? Like, I don't know. They just needed to be, you could feel the dancer energy was there. I just needed mm. more comedic energy. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah that would have been good. Uh, okay, Issa, Issa Rae, I'm pretty sure. I, I forget. I don't know. So I forget good. how you. That's say one her point name. I wanted to make earlier. Like I, I really wish we could have seen Will Ferrell and his group like more throughout the movie. Like you'll see them like when they start they to travel. They kind of just disappear. And yeah. then they disappear for a little while, and then yeah. they just show up, and you're like, oh, I've. They're, they're, they were it, making their way over It took here. them that I long like that happened to a get. Lot of yeah. Yeah. It did, it did happen. Or quite a lot lot maybe if they were more of like a villain. Yeah, because I, I feel like they weren't villainous. Which, they were just kind of. But I feel like they were trying. They were, so they, so were, they trying were trying to be the antagonist. Yeah, but it never really like, because and I had this thought in the back of my mind as like you know watch like they all came back to Barbie Land and they were trying to get you know tear down the kingdom. Yeah, like all that, all the dojo mojo. Yeah, costumes. it's, it's was, almost like the Barbies in, became the In the back the of my head, I was like, but like, yeah, who was Will the antagonist? Yeah, but or the, what yeah, was the antagonist? Right? Like the kids, Technically, I should say like Patrick, but I'm not even. Yeah, that actually is not actually a character always, in the story. Yeah, yeah. Like that yeah. was just like. It's like the kids were supposed to be, but they were just like a bunch of just like. It was almost like uh, you know, like the monkeys left out, left out, <laughs> you know, that left out of the box almost. Yeah. You know, like that's just how it felt. Uh, like they were, yeah. it's like, hey, like these guys just got out of hand. They're not the antagonist. They're just out of control. That's just how they felt. Like you know, like most movies today, like they have that. I don't know. Like in the back of my mind, I always thought Will Ferrell and his little little team of corporate people were just mm-hmm. gonna come in and like ruin everything. Yeah. Like they were gonna come in and like wreck it and like they were gonna be the ones that they had to get around. Yeah. But it they it, did. They they popped up. But then they, they just kinda stood there. Yeah. They, they were didn't more really like a supporting have, character. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it like, wasn't really but in the back of my mind I just had it like based off of like a bunch of other movies I've seen, you know, that yeah. feels up. like it should be the You case. know, it feels like yeah. they should just come up out of nowhere and then now they're the problem right. for the char- for the main characters to deal with. But right. it, they really never became a problem. Yeah. No, they didn't. That, that's that's the thing. Like they, it, it probably would have worked better if they were a problem. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just... But, I mean, that's a lot of movies you see today. Yeah. Like, I, I guess they just kind of It's, it's time to do something but different. But I don't know. It was, yeah. It's a good way was, to look at it. That was interesting to me. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's see. Were you talking about the Oscars? Then? Yes. That's, 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 a, again, no, that's exactly what I was actually okay. going to say. So, Jinx. <laughs> um, do you all think this will win any Oscars? Rebecca, do you think it's going to win any Oscars? I mean, I'm probably the only one that really cares about this one. This in Dallas, you probably do. I'm not. It's it's hard to say. I'm not sure <sighs> because like, if they had okay, so if if they had more dance so. and singing scenes like the choreographed party, I feel like it could because then it could like classify as like a musical number, like yeah. more than just one musical number. I don't know. I know? feel like if you get an Oscar. It's more serious. Like it's yeah. a more like not not to say that this movie isn't serious, but I mean, I don't know. Because the I, that's a hard that is yeah. a hard question. That that's a very hard question. Because the 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 Oscars. I don't know why I'm about to say. I always Oscars. feel like I see <laughs> someone who wins it's an like, Oscar is playing a very <laughs> serious movie, like a very yeah. serious very subjective. Role. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're very subjective. Like they're like they do go for more just plain dramas, like Oppenheimer. I, I, I'm, uh, like I think that, gonna, that's an Oscar movie. I think like, it's going to sweep either that, Napoleon coming out, um, Flowers Phoenix. of the Killer Moon. Oof. Like, all of those are going to, when those come out, like, I feel like those are just going to landslide this. So this doesn't, I feel, I don't feel like it's really in um, exactly a, an Oscar, as, a, on, as an Oscar category. Mm-hmm. Maybe with Margot Robbie being 
best actress. Yes, I, I could agree with that. If, I, if Ken had done more, like a lot more, yeah. if we saw more of his character building, more of his like intense like seriousness, mm-hmm. I feel like he he could have gotten like a like a assisting. Um, yeah. What do, what do you call that? Assisting actor. Uh, yeah, best supporting, supporting, supporting actor. actor. Yeah. He's supporting. definitely gonna get a best. I I think he's gonna get nominated at least by for best supporting actor. Know. Whereas for maybe Matt Damon might win it for Oppenheimer. I don't know. It's, it's especially since we're yeah. so far out. I feel like that's where it's gonna go. So. So the Oscar. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. You go. You go. Um, the Oscar. For marketing should go to Barbie. Oh yeah, yeah yes. that's true. No. Uh, like the marketing I, I agree is with like. That. I yes. agree with I've that. wondered yeah. how much they, of the budget went to marketing, I mean, and yeah. and even I've wondered if Mattel funded the marketing. Like they made me want to watch it. Uh, and I I'm mean, not a Barbie guy. It, <laughs> we like people on Instagram. I, I I'm not on social media a lot, but I mean, you know, the caption of like this Barbie is whatever, or mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I'm Farmer Barbie or whatever. Uh, it's uh, it, it hit it hit a level, a, a pitch that was kind of brilliant marketing. It, I read an article saying maybe there's a level of oversaturation, which I would have been ready for it to come out like two weeks earlier. Like yeah. I was kind of like, oh my goodness, so much, so much Barbie stuff. But I mean, even the fact that the color pink was a big part of the marketing. Yeah. I mean, people. I went to the theater and we were all wearing pink, and yeah. they had pink tinsel hanging <laughs> up. I mean, you can't pink. Oh hang my a goodness. little mushroom cloud, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not going to work the same. But the marketing was, uh, yeah, quite genius. Because even if you look up Barbie on Google, it like does pink sparkles. Yes. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. Does it really? Yeah, it's pretty cool. If you look what? up Barbie, it does like the pink sparkles and your, stuff. Your Yo. screen has taken over. Yeah, I did not know that. Barbie has yeah. taken over. Barbie has yeah. taken over. I would, wow. I would truly love to know more about the marketing. That reminds me, like I, I've wondered, like we were talking earlier about like feminism. Marketing just reminds me of the fact that this movie is, of course, international. Um, I've wondered how that conversation lands in other cultures with the with the different challenges that they face. Um, I know we there's this <laughs> there's a conversation about it in France and but but speaking of internationally, it's this movie that's kind of all about inclusivity and then there's that whole issue with the map. Yeah. Yeah. And the movie's banned in Vietnam because the, of yeah, the way the map is drawn, which I'm not I didn't quite Wait, read up on it yeah. enough to be able to communicate yeah. well. What, what, but what do you mean like by that? It, like it like when it says so think, the real world, it's oh, not when she's visiting Weird Earth. Barbie. Oh I d- y- so there's I, some I kind of like that, it was named I, something else yeah. that they really something called the nine dot line that is yeah. kind of I guess Vietnam has a lot of issues with China and then Matt prioritized China's power or something yeah. like that yeah. and it's actually banned in Vietnam and in another country the mm. map is blurred out yeah if I had found I wonder oh, I this is I where you use CGI. I didn't just see go that. into the little eraser kinda, yeah. and, f- and change it for, exactly. for being. Like, I need to see that again. Especially for I need to read so up on that. I need to see, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. matters. Like, the map. Uh, yeah. I, I, I did remember they showed, like, you know, where Barbie Land was and then, you know, the real world mm-hmm. compared to it. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what you're saying when they showed that. That, that map. She's that wearing, like, map. the blue dress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't notice that. Not not entirely. I need to read up back up on it. Yeah. And yeah. any story about like a doll in another land and stuff is kind of fantasy ish. But when they, oh, <laughs> when they started the talking fantasy-ish. about portal hopping, I was just like, oh my gosh, Wait. I did not come here to see Doctor Who. Like, yeah. Please then, spare but me then she another said it's portal. Not, but then she said it's <laughs> then she not. Said, and I was like, thank you. It's not technically a portal. Kay McKinnon. Like, Whew, yeah. What a relief. And it makes sense. Yeah. But. yeah. <laughs> it's more like this thing where you. They have to go through. Costume changes. The so time they're in the car. Okay. Then they're on a boat. Then they're on a snowmobile. Then they're on. No, oh, no. It's, the, it's the. Then they're on the. It's the rocket. And then guys. the snowmobile. Then the rocket. Oh then the snowmobile. Then roller. Oh boy. Then they're just. In rollerblades, but have then this... you notice in the real world when they're going to Barbie Land, you see like almost like the set pieces rolling in, like the yeah, you do. Like, yeah. You see like the snowy mountains cool. and the snowy hills just like rolling, very and like soundstage, like, and then they like go into it, old school know? style, yeah, for sure, yeah. very old school style. So, since this is a feminist movie, and that's one of the beefs I have with it, they didn't always do that well. Um, so when Barbie lands in the real world wearing that leotard and on her rollerblades, she says, she's, she makes a comment about how she's being objectified, and she says, I need to go put on more clothes. Hmm. Pretty sure I got that line right. And I was just like, 
What? Or like, so there's a solution to you. We need a change being... of clothes. I think that's what she said. Okay, I we... thought she said we need to put on more clothes. Either way, she's kind of implying no, that, like, it's what she's wearing yeah, well, yeah, that's sure, yeah. the for reason sure. yeah, oh, for yeah, that, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a, a very, and the, 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 the guys who are talking, like, at the, at the, the construction like, site. Wow, yeah, the construction site clothes, yeah. in, like in the police yeah. station. Oh, yeah, and the police station. And yeah. I was she really proud better. of herself for, like, whacking that guy in the face. Yeah. And I kind oh, of, like, yeah, actually yeah, wouldn't have yeah. mind spending, spending more time um, seeing Seeing, like, those, yeah. air, like, uncomfortable circumstances. And where also she, like, seeing, I was, like, proud of her for whack. Yeah, that was, <laughs> was like, Yeah, yeah. Woo-hoo. Whacked, turned around and whacked And then we just kind of, like, skated right past that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It didn't get enough, like, celebration almost. Yeah, or. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you know, I don't, I don't know if maybe Ken needed to throw a punch too. That's he that, was a little you know, distracted. I feel like I feel like that's another another aspect that you know they could have touched on, like making. But I liked that Barbie Ken, did it. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. But like, if Ken, you know, wanted Barbie's attention so much, you would have thought that Ken would be the one. And if he to, really cared, like yeah. he says in the beginning, like at the party, and I, I really felt pulled into his character when he said this, which actually didn't happen a lot with the characters. Barbie goes off to have her girl party and he's not going to come to a sleepover. And he's like, I love you too. And I felt like we were getting set up for this great story. But I mean, so if he loves her, which I actually felt like there was not really any love in the story, like even yeah. friendship love yeah, or not, there's yeah. really not inner, much of that inner yeah. self love or romantic love. I was just like, we're, we're coming up really, well, you yeah. also gotta really think, dry on that. You also got to think that these are like, they're thinking through the minds of kids though. Yeah. And kids can't actually right. truly hey, like. That's a good point. Because yeah, like, they are. They're kid, dolls, and then they're the yeah. people who the kids as who a kid, play with like, the dolls. A girl yeah. and a boy can't like actually. Yeah. Like so yeah. it's hard to imagine being in love at that age. It's almost like, oh, you're right. So it's like I forget about that. I forget about that aspect. I really forget about yeah. that. Well, actually, yeah. Yeah. they're dolls, and then there's kids that play with the dolls, yeah. and they're intertwined in some way, and then that they go off of their feelings too. Whenever I watch the trailer. When they were having that interaction, like, oh, because we're boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, I, I'm, I was wondering if I could stay over tonight. Like, playing as a girl, like, you'd be, you haven't, oh, yeah, you want to come to my house? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's just hang out. Like, that's what it felt like, you know? Yeah, you're so right. it's like, wow, I never yeah. thought it about that. Your, but yeah. now that that makes, that makes a, a whole ton of sense. Yeah. No, that was childhood element. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Categories. Hit picks. Do you have any hit picks for, for the movie? What's a hit pick? So, what was like the main takeaway that you really liked? Like, what was something that you really liked? A pro. Yeah. What was like a pro? What was a con? Watching someone kind of have the journey from like girl to woman. Yeah. yeah. That was a pro or a con? That was, was a, a pro. pro. That, was, that a was a message okay. that I don't even know that they wrote out what they were intending to do, but that, well, I, th- I think they probably did somewhat, but that did happen and I appreciated it. Yeah. yeah. Rebecca, what did you think? I liked, like, I think I said it, it was like, um, not disregarding either genders, like with the Kens all in complete power and the women completely disregarded, and then the women in complete power and the men completely disregarded. Like yeah. it didn't work because the people disregarded, they like they want to be with the other person, but they they don't feel anything. They're not getting anything in return. It was a so very think, equal. Yeah, but like level of not inclusive. disregarding every or anybody. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like because even like with uh the the weird Barbie and Midge like. It's just when you disregard someone, like, even, like, Midge didn't even seem like she understood that they were talking behind her back. Yeah. So it's, like, like just the fact that at the end, like, they're, like, we need we need to stop this. Like, we can't keep excluding people. And stuff. Yeah. I actually didn't mind. Yeah, now that we're, we're definitely. They apologized. They said, they sorry that we called Barbie. you weird yeah. Barbie behind your back and in front of your face. I kind of think, though, like, weird shouldn't be a bad word. Like, I kind of wanted to be like, you know what? You're weird, Barbie, and you're actually doing an awesome job owning it, and you're, like, a great resource for everyone in this community. And, And like, as weird as someone might come off, they are the only person in the world like that and they should be respected and appreciated yeah. and they they have a value yeah. and, and her yeah. character just for themselves that, that but i didn't like her being called ugly yeah because yeah, she's weird, weird and scribbled on and she shouldn't be called and then every time like her yeah. face came in the screen they were like <gasps> you know like or but, <laughs> but uh, then one time she was like i set myself up for it yeah yeah <laughs> that was yeah. really funny yeah because yeah, kate mckinnon mckinnon is a very beautiful lady 
She really, yeah. yeah. And she yeah. said she felt like the most like herself with the marker on her face. I kind of well, didn't know why they took it off sometimes. Oh, that's wild. They did take uh, it off at the end of the movie. Yeah, I was like, yeah. no. Like she had no more if markers. If that dog got colored on, that, that marker's there yeah. to stay. Yeah. But so, yeah. what I was saying was. And it looks great. Was, I, it did. It was very, I would be a red Barbie. Very artistic. For, <laughs> is, uh, for, I'll be, maybe I'll be a red Barbie for Halloween. Why? Do it. It was like, oh my God. What was, what was your hit pick? How about that? Hit pick. Okay. So, I mean, I loved. The singing, mm-hmm. the like, and like you said, like the choreography. Yeah, the like, choreography. Oh, was. dude, because you know Ryan, like he's a singer dancer. Yeah, like, he started up in show business as a singer dancer, then got into <laughs> acting. Right, and I mean, and I didn't know that until I watched Barbie, and then I kind of just read up a little bit on Ryan Gosling, mm-hmm. and I saw that those things, and I was like. That makes sense. That makes total like, sense. He, dude, He's so fluid. I with felt his like moves. he was in his element. Yeah. Like that was his role to sing, to dance, to like be like glamorous, if you will. Like it was like that's completely Ryan Gosling. You, you know why? Based on his background. You too. know why? He channeled his Kennergy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was definitely Knuff. He was definitely Knuff. <laughs> I actually Googled to see if that shirt was for sale afterwards. I oh, it's got to it be. It's, it's, it's got to be. be though, right? Like, for real. Like, that, I mean, that's got to like be. Like I said, and the something? pink... Pink volleyball. And, and if not, the pink if not, can we please? Get some? If not, you can make yeah. it. Yeah, like you can go yeah, on these websites and make, it, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah. make a, a, you know, sweatshirt Jacob, or a shirt. We still have friends at Varsity. Yeah, or shout out to Etsy, not a sponsor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm hopping all over, but I just saw a note where I said that uh, I think all of Greta's other movies that she's written and directed, mm-hmm. Little Women and um, Lady Bird. Lady Bird. Mm-hmm. She's gotten an Oscar nomination for the screenplay. I don't. Did she win yeah. both times? I th- I'm pretty sure she did. So I actually, I I think this is kind of salty, but I think the Academy is going to look out for her. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if she They're gets nominated again. But for Barbie, this, just, yeah. yes. But the screenplay, I uh, just that's where the, yeah. the story yeah. and the dialogue is just. Because I feel like all the movies coming out. I feel like all the movies coming out. It has been a dry year. It feels like all the movies. All the big movies that are coming out are like blockbuster, so they're gonna like. There, she has a it's lot to be compete with. Yeah, she's. A, there's a lot of competition. Okay. Is what I'm saying. Um, my hit pick. I, I feel like there was just a good balance of politics within the film, especially for these days. <laughs> there, you know, politics are something that everyone steers away from. It seems like, whereas this one, like, it was able to find a middle ground. I feel like personally. That it was like it was not too left, not too right type thing where you know that like there was like everyone can see this eye to eye. I feel like I, did you agree on that? It, it definitely had like a little nonchalant political like as like yeah, as I said was very, before, it was very, very nonchalant push, political kind aspect. Kind of slid across the table, type but thing. Uh, no, nah, like I agree. Like it wasn't like all about that. Yeah, you know, like left or right. Yeah. you know, like it wasn't like big on that. Yeah. Which it, I can appreciate that. And, you know? and like what you said, it was a I feel like there was a good rep- representation of men, especially within the just kin dance. I was like, I would have been part of that dance ensemble personally. Yeah. Like you know, dude, like, I, I love you, you that was my you favorite cannot, part of the You movie, cannot bro. lie, like we both would have been in there uh, like, dude, like, <laughs> dancing with Ryan Gosling. Hey, I don't know how to dance. Getting that but I would love to make that it on TikTok so send uh, me. Yeah, fake Oh we should. Fake it till you make it. Hey. Right. Yeah. I'll learn it. <laughs> yeah. Nitpicks. What Rebecca, start with you, nitpicks. Um, let me all right. Okay. Bri- okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. We both have notes. Re- <laughs> I have a lot of notes. Okay, well, okay, Re- so I'm one sorry, nitpick Rebecca. I got was, like, instead of, okay, so this is what I wrote. Instead of offering a reflection of what it means to be human or a doll, living alongside other humans and dolls, um, it, the movie kind of fell uh, in, like, an existentialism where... Life is essentially meaningless, and it's up to you to assert your own meaning. So, like, with them, like, struggling with their identity, not, like, living with each other, but it was, like, you are you, and you need to figure this out. Like, when Barbie was saying, yeah. it's not it's not Barbie and Ken, and, like, we're just, we're friends, and this is great. It's Barbie making my life, and it's Ken, and you're making your life. Yeah. So, like... And then she just kind of, like, 
blocks out the picture. Like there was no understanding of like the yeah yeah yeah. Potential I agree. Living yeah. together. And I agree yeah. with how that. much they could cost was, each other or benefit each other. Yeah, or, I was completely yeah. expecting Barbie and Ken like at the end of the movie like living in the to dream be together. House together like to be yes. together and yeah. finally yeah. like find each other and like it's Barbie and Ken like I was expecting that. Yeah. yeah. But then it it just took a different route. That's yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. You're saying it kind of fell on its face a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a little bit, and like without without a whole lot of explanation in the end. Yeah, well, that's my nitpick too. I feel like it kind of just fell on its face with its narrative and what it was really trying to go for. Yeah. Just yeah, but it was it was still a fun ride. That's also my hit pick. It was just a fun ride. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely a fun. Virginia, ride. I've. I feel I feel like you have a nitpick. Uh, you're just I, right I know, I know she has it. a nitpick. She has a nitpick. I she's know like, she has she's a like, nitpick. all right, here it is. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is gonna ruin the whole movie for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, where do I start? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> I told you, oh, dude. Oh, I know she's okay. got the nitpick. Okay. How about just one? Just <laughs> well, yeah, so five. five. <laughs> just five. I, I brought so many pages, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, you know nitpick, I, nitpick, nitpick. Okay. Uh, I, I threw some of them out there. Um, I'm yeah. really curious, like. Now to revisit the line about the clothes, I made the comment about that. Um, I thought so. Here's I think that Greta started writing it. Greta know it maybe, and they really this happens a lot. the The first few minutes felt really polished. Um, I wrote down some hmm. quotes like the 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 song with the way Lizzo was incorporated into the. I did like that. Yeah, like she's like commenting on the mirror with the no glass in it while she's. Yeah. Looking at it, oh, I, can't, yeah, I can't remember yeah. the lines. If like, this mirror had glass, then mm-hmm. you, yeah, just a smile behind it or something. Like yeah, that. So, uh, I, I, mm. yeah, no shot. That's about. interesting. Yeah, um, I thought that was Lizzo. Yeah, that yeah, was Lizzo. That was Lizzo. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard to tell who was in it yeah. because at the end it was like Barbie, 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 yeah, Barbie, yeah. Ken, 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 Ken. <laughs> so like, it was hard for me to follow like the names, you know? Yeah. This is um, probably maybe it's not a hit pick, but it's a positive nitpick. I I loved Alan. Yeah, I thought Alan was a win, and Alan was like a Alan great was, Alan comedic relief. Yeah, and he, yeah. Was, like he was. It was very well. comedic. I love, my, the I love most Michael Sarah. Normal Sarah. and balanced of all all the creatures but on it, there from it real world me. to any world. What is Alan? And he what is Alan? he had the funny thing where he tried to climb over the fence. Oh and yeah, and he didn't make it. Like that was one of the few. Like I thought, like genuinely, like let me. Let me catch my breath and what's going on and, and watch something funny moments. Um, and even, yeah, so back to the way they were writing it, I thought the line, ask your mother uh, at the beginning was funny. Um, I thought there are no multiples of Alan. He's just Alan. At the beginning, <laughs> yeah, he was like really he's funny. Literally yeah. just Alan. When uh, Margot Robbie's like, even Wednesdays, <laughs> like, you know, that was just like really, there was just like yeah. all these things that romantic. felt like the writing was well polished. Yeah. So I think they started to write it and then like the pandemic happened and then they just yeah. kind of released kind what of they unraveled. were experiencing yeah. mm-hmm. into it and like we're like, this is what we must go with. But the a positive um, nitpick at the beginning was that 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 part felt funny, witty, well paced, mm-hmm. felt like I was getting drawn into a great story. And yeah. It was I, written well. I agree. So are you saying you feel like they they started out strong, yes. started off polished, but then they started sure. to kind of lose yeah. where Especially they were going I feel like a lot of movies point. today they do, do that. They start so strong, and you're like, wow. Because people it, get so excited about end, writing it, and they polish and it, and they then just, they think yeah. through it, and then they just, they kind of just got to yeah. get this in production. To, yeah. me, mm-hmm. to me, towards yeah. the end, you just you, you, you didn't even there. feel like it was a Barbie movie. Yeah. It yeah. felt like they were all just kind of It became people. a Ken movie at one point. Well, no, it just became Were they people, people, but were we watching Love Actually? Yeah. But it wasn't Love Actually, yeah. but I wanted yeah. kind of... And that's <laughs> one thing that I, I had the, a question about, is like, whenever they went to the human world, the Barbies and Kens were human-sized. Yeah. So when the humans went to Barbie land, did they get small? Because I think it would have been funny if they were still, like, mm. big. Oh. oh, I see what you're saying. Because, like, you like, a Cause Barbie. They're like, they're like, oh, it's a Barbie. A Barbie a doll size. is yeah, about is small. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like Gulliver's that. Island. It's like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah like, oh. Gil- uh, no, not Gilligan's Island. What is it? Uh, Somebody's Gulliver's Island. Gulliver's Travel. Gulliver's Travel. Yeah, kind of like that. So, like, with the Lego movie. Right, just comparing like a, a uh, like the Lego figures in the human world were just that big. They were tiny. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like when the Barbies went to the real world, that, they yeah, were big. Yeah, that is. And then when the humans went to Barbie yeah. land, they yeah. were they were all the same. They were the all same the same size. size. Yeah. So that's one other thing that kind of 
Mm. Okay. Do you have Dallas? Do you have a major nitpick? Major nitpick. I mean, for me, it was just like, uh, like more positive nitpick for me. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, was just like the. I feel like the only thing that stayed consistent throughout the film was like uh, the comedic yeah. impact. The, like, yeah. So you thought it was funny? Oh, I thought it was yeah. hilarious. Okay. I did. Through, through, pretty much throughout the whole entire movie, the whole an you hour. You thought the comedy was very 55 consistent. 55 minutes, I believe it was. Like, yeah. There was just some funny, something to laugh about or something to smile about throughout every, like the whole entire movie. Obviously, except for when she's like, maybe when she's talking to the, the older lady. But even then, even even then, when she's talking to Ruth, yeah. the creator of Barbie, you know, like she doesn't know how to sip the tea because, yeah, yeah, like yeah. in Barbie Land, you just yeah, yeah, you just throw pretend. it over your mouth. Yeah, even that was funny. But yeah, but it was a serious moment. It was a serious like, you know, uh, moment of realization for the main character. Mm-hmm. But it still had some comedy in it. Yeah, soft, e- even though it'd be like soft comedy. Yeah, you know, but I, I just feel like that was my nitpick. There was Speaking just Speaking of that though, like early in the movie, like I felt like we left Barbie Land and started talking about dying like right away. Like yeah. we're in this. I love we Barbie, Barbie Land. We were yeah. in Barbie Land finally. Yeah. Like we've been anticipating it since like yeah. December twenty twenty two, and and I wanted more like details. Like I wanted yeah. to like, I just wanted some other like Barbie Land. Her feet don't leave footprints in the sand moment or I was actually really curious if they would have pets in there that yes. were real looking. No, I was I was about to say that. Like you only saw that one dog. Like robotic dog. Like. Yeah, the one that said bark. It was, yeah, it was <laughs> the one that they barked. tried to go along with <laughs> The with the Barbie, products. The Barbie line. The yeah. actual yeah. Barbie products. I'm pretty sure that was only yeah. a dog. But I would have liked to spend more time having these perfect days. Not because they're perfect days, just because, I know like, what you mean. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. but I feel like that's that's how they implemented their conflict with the main character. Yeah, it's like yeah of course. Yeah. Something was happening, and we don't, yeah. even the audience doesn't know what it is. So then we, like... Yeah have to find out. Yeah. yeah. That, but, but Barbie I, land. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Barbie land. Cultural impact. I, I feel like this film really kind of re- revamped like Barbie. Do y'all feel like it revamped Barbie? Oh, to- totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's got it, to. It brought out the Barbie from like all of like, you know, like women of different ages, you know, like y'all, you and, Re- and Virginia and Rebecca are is like different in age, but y'all both game. had like the same like it, it, something came out. Yeah. Like, and even for like us guys, like we were like, like it was somewhere in our childhood. Like it was somewhere there. We're like, we're excited. Especially enough. if you had a sister. Yeah. yeah. You exactly. know, like if you had a sister growing up, we're like these are, these you, are, they had their Barbies, and then yeah. you would get aggravated at their Barbies, or yeah. you know, they're tear pu- them apart. You're, you're playing with your toy army soldiers, yeah. and they come in with their Barbies. Yeah, it's like the GI Joes, like yeah. fight against Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. GI Joe we, we, versus we, we, Barbie. We have something to you know, apo- we have something to owe to Margot Robbie as Barbie. <laughs> so we got to go and show our support. Uh, yeah. That's just what I feel like with the cultural impact. All right, questions needing answers. I have just one for y'all, okay? Could there have been a better Barbie and Ken duo, as in Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling? There's a correct answer. I don't think so. No on three. No on three? One, one two, two, three. three. No. no. No, like, on a, <laughs> Barbie. Not a chance. Margot is Barbie. Ken, Ryan is Ken. I, I, I Ryan. Really miss, you got it. I, I, really, I got there eventually. <laughs> yeah, so I, I personally think there could not have been a better I, I don't have any within the store like questions needing answers within the story but that was the best one I could think of like, I think like because I'm blonde I could be like oh I could probably be Barbie but like uh no <laughs> I'm gonna uh, let Margo take that you, you, you could you could you, you, could, you, could, you, could, pu- you could toss your hat in the ring come on uh, no come I on. need a brown eyed I kn- well that's yeah. the thing yeah, yeah. so yeah I, I do, speaking of eyes, I do love Margot Robbie's eyes. They're, yeah, I can they're get lost. Just... I can get lost in that ocean. <laughs> Actually, when I saw it, there was these middle school boys sitting behind me. Uh, one of the times I saw it, and they were actually to me funnier than the movie. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you, I have a very, I have high standards for things I care about. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Middle school boys are, Clearly. are very, but, very But so Margot got on the screen. I think she says one time, like, I don't know what I want. And behind me, they were like, you want me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no. It was really funny. Yeah, they I, had uh, a couple other clips. I, I, never, I never do this. But, like, there was one time where, like, she po- showed up. And I, like, I was like, I'm just going to see how she reacts. So I leaned over to my girlfriend. Like, she is so beautiful. And she was like, she was, and she was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, whoa, whoa! I was not expecting that. I was expecting like, stop. Was like, no, 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 Margaret Robbie. <laughs> favorite quotes. Let, let's all let's all do one favorite quote. Does anyone remember like anything? Like I, there is one that I have. I'm ready. You're ready for mine or yours? Mine, but I interrupted. Oh no no no! Go. What's your favorite quote? I'm a man without power. Does that make me a woman? <laughs> <laughs> I know that is. That I is, do remember that one. I, I that guy laughs that every time. I do love that one. Yeah, that one did get a really big laugh within the theater I went to. Oh, I can't Rebecca, do you have one? Uh, not one right now. No. All right. I'll so my so mine is when Helen Mirren comes over as the narrator and is like, okay. this "Note to the creators: If you if you want her to say this line, don't hire Margot Robbie." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was great." I was like, I was like I, "Because I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, she has like." It's like the thing is like she has no makeup on, you know. Yeah. Not, that like that's just like the perception, right? Mm-hmm. Like women, if they don't have makeup, they're like, "Don't look at me, I'm not pretty." I've heard that too many times. You know, I'm just speaking from my own experience here. Like when, like that's the thing. Like Barbie was like Margot Robbie was saying that as Barbie, like this, she's like beautiful, you know. Like yeah. I don't know. Like, no, that's, like girls, I thought the exact probably same has thing. a lot more application too. Like you might be feeling like you're in the middle of a meltdown, but you're beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And like girls call that ugly crying. Like when they're yeah, crying a right. lot, we call it ugly crying. Yeah. But like, I, I thought that she's was, not, she's, she's literally, beautiful. I thought that, like that, even while she's ugly crying, <laughs> I, I thought it, I thought it spoke to the narrative too, very yeah. well too. So mm. I thought it, and added. Helen Mirren's voice just elevates everything. I, I could fall asleep to <laughs> Helen Mirren. Yeah. Yeah. She could be telling me a, bu- a Ted Bundy, you know, little biography oh and I'll, I'll fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> do you call that hanging a lantern i watched a little clip is there like that someone said that that's when like that's what you call it when the script writers put something in there that acknowledges the absurdity of a situation it's almost like breaking the fourth wall yeah oh yeah or yeah that. it's like basically mm-hmm. that yeah dallas do you have anything before so my quote i do have a favorite quote i think my just the one that I laughed the most at was when Ken was like, I have all the genitals. <laughs> like, I got just, yeah. I thought that was, that was hilarious. That was, like, that was I, like my, yeah, that was one like of he mine just too. had to like and assert his that, you know, like his delivery was on point. All of Ryan Gosling's delivery was perfect. No, yeah, That's what made did, his He did an quotes. amazing job. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, were you able to think of one? Gotta, it's okay. Yeah, no, I got to say the roller skates one. I yeah. love Yeah, the dude, that, that one is really I never good. Because, because, no, no, it's, I did laugh pretty uh, hard at that I one. I never go anywhere without them. Right. He's, yeah. like, he's in complete disbelief that she, she thought, thought he didn't yeah, have them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. There we go again, the delivery. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, the delivery he, was yeah. And that goes back to what I was saying. Could there have been a better kin? No. No, thank you. No one else. They'd probably try to get a... Uh, Pete Davidson in there. <laughs> no. no, thank you. No. <laughs> I think they should get Jim Carrey in there. I'm Jim Carrey and Timothy Haddish. Yeah, I want to see them. That been, they would have been made cool. Yeah, I don't know if Jim Look. Carrey could pass as like. Oh my a goodness! Kin, we could have gone. But why the heck mm. was John Cena in there? Oh, oh no, it was as an accident. a merman. It was yeah. an accident. <laughs> what? Actually, I heard so Margot Robbie and him. Stop me if y'all know more about this, but um, I don't. Margot Robbie and him were in something in the past, and she was at a restaurant in England, and somebody paid for her dinner, and she's like, "Who paid for my dinner?" And they're like, "John Cena did. He's here too." And she was like, "Hey, John, will you come be in my film?" He's not in there very much, but oh, yeah. he was. No, he just awesome. like popped yeah. into that. Hi, Barbie. He, he was just, just like in, in. The, in the country. <laughs> he's and, a merman, and was, he just pops in, and that's like awesome. the whole story. And then he starts playing like the ukulele yeah, he in is the waves at the end, or it's towards, towards a, or in the middle, yeah, or towards the end. For he's the in there a couple songs. times. Why did I totally forget that John Cena? Do I know right? And then Dua Lipa as well. Yeah, she was she was the mermaid. I think even Dua Lipa and John Cena were at the in the waves. I think even Greta Gerwig herself was in that. I think so too. Really. I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think she was one of the Barbies, but I'm I'm not sure. There, then again, I there saw so her in the cast. Was there a proper redhead Barbie? 
There was a red there was. Barbie, I thought. Yeah, oh. the doctor. doctor Barbie? Yeah, the okay. Barbie. Yeah, that was Dr. Barbie. Yeah, Dr. Okay. Barbie. She was, or, she was red Or Physician Barbie. I'm sorry. Was it Physician Barbie? I, I th- we I called her Dr. Barbie. I think she's slated as Dr. Barbie. Yeah, okay, I got it was, you. It was, it was, Dr. Barbie's fun to say, too. <laughs> it is yeah. fun to say. Dr. Dr. Barbie. Barbie. It's more fun to say than, than Physician Barbie. Physician yeah, and there was... <laughs> Physicist Barbie. Yeah, physicist yeah, Barbie. Physicist. Yeah, that, that, see, that might be what I'm thinking about, yeah. and I just kind of like mix the two probably words is. together. Probably is. Notable acting performances. Um, obviously, Ken. Uh, Ryan Gosling is Ken. Margot Robbie, she killed it. Uh, yeah, it's just Ken got too lost in his role. Like, Ryan got too lost in his role as Ken. You think? I think so. He, he well, that's why he it, he did so good. Is he just immersed himself yeah. into it? I feel yeah. like more than Margot Robbie did. I feel like, but she still, she still was amazing. She just what she just because of she said one time, you know, I want to be appreciated for the work I put in, not just that I'm beautiful. But I mean, yeah, she's just beautiful. She's Barbie. Like she, she, she yeah. is. And then they, <laughs> ha- probably they have to put in like a little side note, little director's note. Like you know, they pause the movie and say, to like you said that earlier, that's like, yeah. to the point that that's necessary. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, they had to do that. Yeah, because it's yeah. just like exactly. Yeah, she she is a phenomenal actress. I, I do love Margot Robbie. I'm on board with her. Not not just because of how beautiful she is. And uh, Kate McKinnon needs a shout out. Kate McKinnon. She did I, well. I, I she did, did love awesome job. Yeah. I did love Kate McKinnon as Weird Barbie. Mm-hmm. Um, weird Barbie. And I will say this while we're while we're here. Will Ferrell, he can easily go overboard with his comedy, his style. He can go overboard sometimes. Like, he gets a little too loud. I feel like he carried it well. He kind of had, like, that... I agree. I think he carried his his comedy yeah. sense he really well. He was just well. kind of... Yeah. You know, like, like, a lo- like, I feel like there was a lot of things in this film that was, like, kind of nonchalant. Yeah. I feel like his comedy was funny, it was funny. but it, it didn't overtake, Yeah. like, you know, the main characters or just, like, you know... Yeah, like he the kinda, main character, they didn't like overtake it. Like you didn't think like, oh, Will Ferrell's in here. It's all about Will Ferrell, yeah. you know, because yeah. usually that's how it is. He yeah. goes over the top with mm-hmm. his stuff. And speaking on that, he kind of felt like a veteran comedian, where he was like, you know, I'm actually going to use like my surroundings to, uh, you know, with my joke. You know, it's like he kind of used and brought everyone in within his joke. Kind of felt like. That's why I feel like they need more comics on there. But yeah. yeah, he did that well. He, kind of, he, he, was, he was great. He, I, yeah, I did. he was. I love this, oh, I love shout, this character. Shout out to I my Molly Wood. I hate yeah. to hate on him a little bit, but oh, I feel like because it. he wasn't a Barbie, or he wasn't a Ken, or he wasn't any sort of doll, I feel like I couldn't blame his goofiness for being a child, like an mm. inner child, like the other ones, though. Oh, so yes. I kind of wish he was a more serious I human. That. I have well, to here's, say. Here, here is a thing, actually. I... I, I hate to burst y'all's bubble and like stop y'all, but that role was actually intended for him to take the business seriously, but not himself seriously, as the Mattel creators, the the creative team. I mean, there was a lot of times throughout the movie. It was like, if it was making money, then he was on it. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. like. Uh, I feel like they made fun of themselves in that. Yeah, way. but yeah. They, but and that was another, like what Rebecca was saying. It's like so. When we went to Barbie Land, we started in Barbie Land, and then we went to the real world. I felt like Mattel was still in Barbie. Yeah, Land. no, yeah. It you know gave what me I mean. The same yeah. goofy, like they were goofy, like feeling. Yeah. they were running through the yeah. Mattel building. And it, yeah. was and like, it was, it was wasn't, like they were in Barbie Land. They, yeah, was, yeah. I was but like, it, they not they weren't in Barbie. It Land. made me want to blame. Oh, you know, they're just they're just young kids, but they're not. They're no, humans, yeah, they're like and they're in the real world. In you the know? real world. Even then, it still it was odd. It was odd. It was a product, but it was funny. It was funny. It was a product. Um, the cinematography by Rodrigo Prieto. Prieto. Uh, he did Frida, Brokeback Mountain, We Bought a Zoo. Uh, Frieto. Uh, Prieto? Prieto. 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 Oh, very, he is Mexican. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was very good, by the way. Good dude, good I got, dude, I got some... Uh, you, you have know, some chops. There's a volcano in Mexico. It's called Parangari Cutiri Micuaro. Oh, that's, that? one, that's all one mm. word. Oh wow! I got you. Look, I got you on the Spanish. Look at bro. look at Dallas got coming you in on hot. The Spanish. Coming in hot. Um, but he did Frida, Brokeback Mountain, We Bought a Zoo, Wolf of Wall Street, Passengers, Silence, The Irishman, and Killers of the Flower Moon. And I, there was a lot more that that were very popular, but I didn't feel like putting on. He, this guy is no, he's no amateur. Wolf of Wall Street, The Irishman. 
yeah, like everything I, beautifully oh shot. Oh my goodness! Love I love like, and when I watch, you know, movies these days, or just any time I watch a movie, mm-hmm. I feel like it's very critical to to understand how the movie is shot. Yeah. So, like, you know, pay attention to the story and, like, you know, the climax mm-hmm. and the plot and, you know, all of that. Yeah. But the way that it's shot, yeah. like, many people overlook that or don't notice things about the way it's shot. Like, just for instance, like, The Shining. Yeah. Like, the, you know, the old horror movie. It's like, he has, he has like, a play in this. And, and you know, this, that of course, this, that's classic Steven Spielberg. Like, you know, right? The Shining? Right? Yeah, Shining. No, that's uh, Stanley Kubrick. I thought that was Spielberg. Kubrick. Oh, wow. it's, all, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, but the way that that is shot was just, it's outstanding. Like, even though, like, some, t- like some of the little things in the movie, like, like you know, in The Shining, mm-hmm. aren't as well-pieced, but the way that it's, like, the camera moves as it goes yeah. along with the actors, like, that's very important. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I thought Wolf of Wall Street was amazing. Yeah, yeah, and like that's what I'm saying. Prieto, like his, watching. like the cinematography was, it's, it's yeah. pretty dang good. It is, you know, he, like it's nice. He knows what he's I doing. I think it was fine. I think, yeah, I think my critiques are directed more at the director. Like I would have liked more shots, just like lingering over, like over, the sunrise yeah. in Barbie Land, or I don't yeah. know. There's a little more, but that's that's. But um, it, yeah, like I don't know. The cinematography wasn't too distracting. It we'll wasn't put, distracting. We'll put it. We'll leave it at and that. I think I mentioned that three second thing, but when, when people start to change the frame really quickly, sometimes I get. Um, I think they're just like, they're trying to keep my attention without having a good story or good set or good costumes, and they did a good job. I think kind of treating some of the shots maybe like they were from a film in older time and lingering over them longer. Yeah, I appreciated that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. All right, the score and soundtrack. Mark Ronson and Andrew White. I mean, two two guys that know what they're doing. Uh, they, I mean, they've done work with honestly, like Bruno Mars, Lady Gaga. You know, they did like they're the ones behind Grenade and Shallows. They both collaborated on that. I mean, you see Mark Ronson's name on like a lot of the biggest labels, and it's kind of cool that they're like part of like the score and the soundtrack. Like they're both very notable DJs. I, y'all, I, I, like we talked about that, just kind of yeah. like little constant themes changed slightly. I, I thought the music was great throughout. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. even like if it wasn't like a musical part, just like the, the music, like changing between scenes or changing between, you know, the transition between mm-hmm. scenes was, was great. Yeah. Like the sound effects and the uh, the music was, was great. Very, that was awesome. I loved pulling mm-hmm. like a diversity of female artists yeah yeah to yeah, carry they had a lot. yeah too. that yeah. was really awesome yeah. and um i think greta Gerwig said disco was one of her inspirations like barbie and disco go together yeah. Saturday yeah Night for, sure, the, for sure and that, that was just fun party. i mean yeah. it was yeah. just a lot of like fun elect- to be a part electric, of that mm-hmm. like yeah. electric vibes you know like disco like which you said, like disco, yeah. i think that's why dua lipa's song w- went perfectly with the dance party it's because yeah. i i feel anytime i hear a dua lipa song it's just like I think of dancing and disco and just like her mm-hmm. style is, yeah. Yeah. is so retro mm-hmm. and so fun. That is a good point. Um, story rewrites or inserts. I don't even know how to, we, we've talked, there's so many holes in this, in this story. I could really have at it. You really could. I mean, honestly, like, I don't even know how, I can't even think on the spot. I couldn't even think on like how to do it really, honestly. Maybe just kind of mix place. Just a sense of like the, the tension, the climax of the tension, the resolution of the tension, like, I'm not, I'm often confused at the end of a movie, but I I didn't understand, like, if I picked up with a Barbie movie in the future, is she fully human? Mm -hmm. Can she go back to being Barbie? Did she stay a doll and adopt, like, a human experience? Like, I'm... I'm on you with that. Well, I actually don't get it. Why didn't she break up with Ken? What's their status? Like... Yeah, have uh, have things more concrete. Or just... A sense of resolution. Yeah. I, I felt like the plot... I, I wanted to go see it and feel like I got pushed down the um, the slide, like, yeah. plot-wise. And I felt like I fell down the stairs hey, at the... Um, at the end? At the weird Barbie's house. Like, I was ah. just like, oh, we're just... I mean, even the cut from, like, we were at the school and then we cut to the Mattel building for, like, no reason. Like, yeah. there was, like, no... I felt... There was sometimes it just felt like we were just... Yeah. I can agree on that, yeah. In a maze instead of mm-hmm. kind of getting carried on the... the for for a, you know, a, a Barbie movie, I had to think, 
Like, I had to think. Yeah. You know, you would think, like, you know, it's I'm going to watch Barbie. You wouldn't have to, like, really think on what yeah. is going on. I had to think, man. Mm-hmm. I had to, like, kind of put two and two together and remember something that, you know, like, it, it just had to it had to mix very, like, uh, meticulously, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. We haven't mentioned the storyline with the... I'm going to use the word toxic here. <laughs> the toxic teen and her mom. Yeah. I thought it was really sweet to see uh, the yeah. mom light up when she made a friend in her Barbie that came to life. Like, she was, like, so much happier just with that companionship. Um, and anyway, that, I wouldn't really change that about the story. I just wanted to kind of mention it because it yeah. was on my mind and we had Yeah, we, we kind of yeah. yeah. brushed over that. Agreed. Well, that's it. We've... Guys, we've talked about one half of the Barbenheimer phenomenon that has taken over this summer. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming on. Rebecca, mm-hmm. thank you for coming on. Of Virginia, course. Thanks for thank, having me. Absolutely. These two, Virginia and Rebecca, are the ones that were like, hey, let's do a podcast on Barbie. So thank y'all. I credit I y'all pumped. for it. Yeah. Well, thank you. You, you, you <laughs> made it concrete. Dallas... Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me, man. Such a, you're such a trooper. Oh man, I I, I feel like I'm gonna be back. You know, I'm you're, I'm, you're, you're I'm gonna, down to be back, bro. Well, I'll talk about any let's, movie. Let's man. do another movie and hey, ways I'm, that I'm go for both for of you. Yes. So thank you all for coming on. Well, folks, thank you for joining us at the Bowtie mm-hmm. Movie Lounge. I'm your host Jacob Strupek again. And these are my guests Rebecca Strupek, Virginia Phillips, and Dallas Strupek. Be sure to email us at mailbag at bowtiemovielounge dot com. Check out our Instagram. Check out our uh, we do have a Facebook not really anything happening on there check out our Instagram I don't think I mentioned that I'm starting to go brain dead so thank you all again for joining we will see you next time at the Bowtie Movie Lounge adios